Another FIFA E Finals comes to a conclusion today here in the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Over the past three days, 24 countries from across the globe have been battling it out in an attempt to make it to finals Friday. $300,000 on the line for the team victorious and a chance to be remembered forever in FIFA folklore. Now we have just four countries remaining, three from Europe and one from South America. Who will lift this trophy in a few hours' time? Well, it's the big one today, isn't it? It's the FIFA E-Nations finals, guys. Only two more matches to go for one of these teams to be victorious. They've already played 14 so far. It's a long way to go, isn't it? On the road to winning here today. Four teams left in it, is, of course, the Netherlands, Italy. Then we've got France taking on Brazil. Big storylines as well unfolding. Mike Labelle is alongside me, as is Brandon Smith and August Rosemeyer as well. Guys, let's get into these big, big stories. First up, the Netherlands take on Italy. And for me, it's about who is going to start first for that side from the Netherlands, Aggie. Who, who do you think? I know you've been in there asking around the teams. What are they going with? I think they're going to go with uh, Emre Yilmaz and Levy. Um, obviously, we saw them start in, in the other games. And then they brought in uh, Batore as the super sub who went in and gave them something extra and I think they want to stick to that because it worked. So um, curious to see how, how that will pan out today against Italy, uh, final four, yeah. Yeah, good choice there. Wouldn't be staying with what works. Emre Yilmaz coming in first and if plan A doesn't go well, you just go to plan B with Manny Bashaw. Yeah, it reminded me of the typical Dutch way, wasn't it? They normally sub on, was it Tim Krul back in the day for a penalty shootout? It was Manny Bashaw that got subbed on in the round of 16 for a penalty shootout, an extra time period uh, against Australia. They've had a, an interesting knockout bracket run, a nervy game against Australia, but then you could say a ridiculous second leg. Five goals they scored in the second leg to get themselves past Morocco. Very much one leg of FIFA I felt we were playing there, just moulded together. Let's talk then, Mike, about the Italian side. Everyone had kind of written them off. They were fourth in their group. They made it through in the end and came out looking like a completely different side yesterday. I don't know if we writ them off or wrote them off, excuse me, but we had a, we were asking for more. And maybe also because we saw the E-Club with Exceed, they didn't reach those expectations. Group stage wasn't that impressive. However, the knockouts, they have been fantastic. They have deserved to get here, and they are ready to cause some havoc. Back-to-back, -back, top four finishes guaranteed. The most vocal team as well. Watch Danny Pitbull. He likes to shout to Oberon. I'm sure only words of encouragement. Well, we've spoken about it. Four teams left. Let's remind ourselves how they got here. The Netherlands came second in Group A, only losing once on their way to the knockout stages. Their round of 16 match against Australia was a tight affair, but the Dutch were imperious in the penalty shootout before vanquishing the Moroccans to secure a place in the final four. Their opponents, Italy, finished fourth to seal the last qualifying spot in Group B. But comprehensive wins over Group D winners Israel and host Saudi Arabia saw the Azuri into the semi-finals. Their European neighbours, France, also made their way out of Group B, finishing runners-up to Morocco. They overcame Sweden in a tight round of 16 match before winning both legs of the quarter-final against Argentina. On to the defending champions, Brazil. They were the only group winners to make it this far, having topped Group C with 20 points. The Selecao faced Nordic opposition in the knockout, beating first Denmark and then Finland to secure the last semi-final spot. Well, that's their route then to get here. The semi-finals of the E-Nations Cup 
Netherlands take on Italy. That's an all-European semi-final before France and Brazil go head to head. Remember, that's a chance for both of them to write their names on the trophy for a second time. That would be pretty special. Well, it is time then to welcome our first semi-finalist to the arena here with Spencer Owen. Yes, guys, it is nearly time for our first semi-final. So please join me in welcoming our first semi-finalist country. It is, of course, the Netherlands. Here come the Dutch team, they're looking good in orange. Ranked 19th in the world, currently making them the lowest ranked team left in the competition, but they had the most impressive victory in the quarterfinals, 5-0 over Morocco. They got them through to the semi-finals, welcome gentlemen. Let's please uh, join me in welcoming the next semi-finalist going up against Netherlands, it is of course Italy. Here come the Italians then, despite a slightly underwhelming group stage, they did what they had to do to get out. And since then, they've been on fire, scoring more goals than any other team in the knockout round so far with eight. And ranked fifth in the world, makes them the second highest ranked team left in the competition. Sure to be a fantastic game, obviously battling out for this trophy. Referee James here is going to do a coin toss shortly. I'm just going to ask both teams a quick question first. Starting off with the Netherlands, I mentioned as you guys entered the arena that you're the lowest ranked team left in the tournament and 19th. Do you think that's right? Where do you see yourself out of these four teams left in the tournament? Uh, that's a tough question. I think um, these four countries really deserved it together with, in my opinion, Israel and Germany may be the favorite six, seven, maybe a miss one. And I think all the countries left are just top tier countries. I think their ranking doesn't say much, to be honest. And we would just fight to get high on the ranking by our placement today. And what have you got in store for Italy? They've obviously been really impressive since they got out of the group stage. Have you got a plan in mind? Um, yeah, we have a game plan. Game plan, you know us. We always prepare uh, the best possible with Renzo. And yeah, Italy was our main practice partner, to be honest, before this tournament. So we know each other quite well. But I believe if we reach our level, we can beat them. Lots of history between these two sides as we cross over to speak to the Italians. They just said that you've been training partners in the past. So do you know all their secrets? Mm, probably yes, probably not. Who knows? Uh, we will see in the game, but you know, uh, maybe we changed something in the last days. They did the same, so I don't think there will be like secrets or uh, known things about us. What changed for you guys after the group stage? Because I was just mentioning there, eight goals in your last two rounds, more than any other team. Very different to how you performed on the first two days. Yeah, I think that's uh, the same thing that happened to us last year because we went through the group stage as fourth also last year and uh, at the break, at knockouts uh, we were playing incredible. I think that just best of two that fits better with us and we are playing good, we will see. The Italians do come alive in the knockout games. Right, it's time to do our coin toss. James, we have a purple side and a blue side of the coin. Can you let us know which side is which country? The blue side is Netherlands, the purple side is Italy. Okay, take it away please, James. The blue side, which is Netherlands, which means Netherlands will be the home team in the second leg. Okay, best of luck, guys. Going to hand over to our casters now to talk us through this one. Thank you very much, Spencer Owen. The stage is set. We are ready in the casting position. Richard Buckley and Alex B. Alex, we've got four nations remaining. First semi-final. It's going to be a cracker. What are you expecting to see from this game? I'm expecting a very mature performance from Italy. They've been so good throughout this knockout stage where they've got the job done, very different to what they had at that group stage. But the Netherlands as well, they've just looked relentless in that attack. They've been going forward with freedom. They've made tactical changes when they need to. Renzo, the coach, is happy to sub out players when needed. It's going to be an interesting battle, one where I think the Netherlands will want to try and take it to Italy. And Italy will just do what they do, which is make it difficult to break down and take their chances if they get them. There's an opportunity for both of these nations to become almost legends, you could say, right here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. You win this game, 
$150,000 guaranteed. Are you surprised to see the, the lineups as they are? No, I think when we, we spoke on the couch with Aggie there saying that he was thinking Emre Yilmaz and Levy were going to be starting and that is going to be the duo which will start that game. It doesn't surprise me whatsoever because Manu has been coming in and doing exceptionally well when he's been called on. Well, kickoff, I'm hearing he's only moments away. If you couldn't get any more excited, have a look at these good luck messages from our friends at FIFA. Hello, uh, this is Ruud Gelut. I will it, uh, yeah. In Nederlands e-team wil ik heel veel succes wensen. En uh, ik zit thuis in Spanje. Het is heerlijk weer, ik ga zo golven. Dus kom op jongens, zet hem op. En heel veel succes. Salud a tutte le squadre en participanti alla FIFA e Nations Cup. Ariad. Siamo orgogliosi del percorso della nostra e nazionale. State facendo benissimo. Un grande in bocca al lupo per le semifinali. Ciao. I mean, if you couldn't get any more excited, you've just got two national heroes there, Rude Hullet and Roberto Mancini. Uh, I'm sure there's been some messages sent overnight to get those in order for today. In these moments, you're coming into a semi-final, the word pressure often gets floated around a little bit. Will they be feeling it on that stage? Or is it, at the end of the day, you know what you're getting into. You know you're getting into a two-legged match of FIFA. You have to, you know exactly what you need to do. You play the match and not the occasion. The pressure will be there for both of these teams. They know the occasion that they have, especially for Italy as well. They were here this time last year. They won't want a repeat of that. And when we think about Levy on the side of the Netherlands, well, it was only five days ago where he was competing in the Club World Cup in that semi-final position with his teammate Olilito. That didn't go to plan for them. They got knocked out by RB Leipzig. They put in an exceptional performance against that team of Team Hullet and Ninja and Pajama. So that will be playing on the mind, saying we're not going to have that again today. I want to advance through to the final. Pressure will be building. When you look back at how they did uh, Italy round of 16 win uh, Israel they beat them and then they knocked out Saudi Arabia in the quarterfinals there was a, a common denominator in both of those games they started the first leg very slowly they won the second leg scoring three goals in both games is it going to be as simple as whoever starts strongest potentially takes this tie when you look at the Netherlands, it was a, a, a really tight game against Morocco in the quarterfinals. Then the second leg, they made the change. Manu Bashaw came in. They won 5-0. Will they know that on the stage as well, that the first leg is super, super important? It is super important. And the Netherlands, for them to want to take down this Italian side, which has grown with confidence throughout the tournament, it's about having that strong and aggressive start. You looking to take the game today, whether you can get that one or two goals. It's a very difficult thing to do against this Italian side of Danny Pitbull and Oberon, which you can see on your screen right now. When we look at the bracket runs as well, I'm kind of leaning more towards Italy in the sense that I think they had they a had tougher, a yeah, they had yeah, a tougher absolutely. route to get to this semi-final. Netherlands taking nothing away from what they need to do against their opponents of Australia and Morocco. Like you said, that they've blown the water out with Morocco. But this Italian side is going to be a different beast. Well, this is no disrespect as well. If you ask people before the tournament started, Israel and Saudi Arabia would have been potentially a winner, a semi-final, yep. certainly. Australia and Morocco wouldn't have been in that conversation. So the the stats, you know. You don't have to be <laughs> worried that, that, that the Netherlands are going to come for you or Australia Morocco will be uh, tweeting you. I think everyone would agree in that fact as well with the Netherlands having potentially an easier run. But that's also because they finished second in the group. They, they got a better seed. They potentially got more preferable matchups. Italy finished fourth. At some points during the first couple of days at the FIFA Nations Cup, we were asking, are they even going to go through? They turned it around in drastic fashion as we are underway for our semi-final number one here at the FIFA E Nations Cup. It's going to be Italy from left to right. Obron and Danny Pitbull, the duo on your screen from right to left. Levy David and Emre Yilmaz, the Champions League winner. He's lifted somewhere already this season. Both players have. Levy lifting the EA Sports Cup in January. And then you go on the opposite side of things. Danny Pitbull lifting the E-Serie A for the second time in his career. When you look at the accolades of... Everyone's a winner. Yes, every individual player on this team. It's just trophies, there's moments and great chances for them to put themselves on the biggest stage again in the FIFA E-Nations final. You see Rude Hullet making that run into the middle of the pitch. When you're talking about achievements as well, something that's gone under, under the radar, Levy. He won the EA Sports Cup 2v2 tournament. He's finished in back-to-back -back Club World Cups as a semi-finalist. He is potentially starting to make his name as 
one of the best 2v2 players we've seen. I also love the fact that in that game, we've now come to find out against Morocco, he said it wasn't Renzo making the choice, it was Levy. One of us needs to get subbed out. We, me or Emery need to come out of this team. He spotted that, they reacted, they went and scored five. And that shows the maturity of Levy as well. To make that decision and say something's not right here, we're not playing well together, let's make that change and not just leaving it down to the coach, that's a big decision for a player of Levy's quality to make. And thankfully, it worked out exceptionally well in that quarter-final game. Just given the, the history of this tournament thus far, with these two in it, expect maybe a, a slightly less goal-scoring first leg performance. Here is the Netherlands building into an attack. Thierry Henry, finesse angle was there, but he decided to recycle possession and... Italy more than happy to bring it clear. For Italy, if you want to try and stop this duo from Netherlands to getting into that 18-yard box and showing the class that they have, we know how mechanical Emre and Levy can be in those areas. They've got the turns, they've got the twist, they've got the skills to beat a man at any point if you allow them in there. It's about you being aggressive, it's you player switching, it's you manipulating and moving your defence in the way that you want them to situate. And that is something that Italy, in the group stage, yes, they struggle with ever so slightly over that one leg of FIFA. Knockouts, they've looked so much stronger defensively. Complete different animal. They're, they've evolved. Evolved indeed. And we were talking about it so many times, saying that they prefer two legs of FIFA. They want to just get through to the knockouts. It's nice to say, uh, see Catch here before the game saying, yeah, we're better over two legs. We don't like one leg of FIFA. Group stages, house cap. Knockouts, Jaguar. Italy are a force to be reckoned with when we get to the more traditional, as we say, FIFA Esports rule set. The Netherlands more than happy to keep this ball pinged over to the left hand side. Usman Dembele has been receiving it on the touchline, very similar to his opposite flank in Roussillon. Mbappe just trying to force the ball inside with that driven pass. Been a few mistakes in the opening 30 minutes. We talked about nerves and pressure. Good example of it being displayed right here. I really like what Netherlands are doing as well, though. Yes, they've given the ball away a few times as they're trying to force it in to that final third. They have been very patient in their build-up, and it's almost testing the mental resilience of Italy to say, how precise are you going to be with your players? Which is, are you going to work across when we switch that ball from one side to the other? It can be draining at times, constantly not having the ball and making sure that you're accurate with it. Italy, though, looking to kind of fire their first way into an attack. The winner of this match plays Brazil or France in the grand final. For the accolades of the best FIFA nation on the planet, that's a lovely ball over the top. Great first touch, and he struck it early as well. Thibaut Courtois down to his left-hand side. The corner will be played. Italy trying to maintain an attacking presence. It was a lovely ball over the top. It was, and Italy have used that time and time again throughout this tournament. It's where they kind of fake that they want to look somewhere else. They send a player on the run through the middle, and then it's just looking for that over the top. A brilliant power shot, just backing the conviction in your strike, testing the goalkeeper, maybe trying to see if Netherlands go for any goalkeeper movement on one side of that goal. But going behind for a corner, and Italy building into the game. You just see that run there from Frankie de Jong. Wasn't the most convincing pass. Over the top through balls seems to be the, the main way to get in behind and create chances at this current juncture. Offside track from the Netherlands, but Italy savvy to it. Not turning over possession and expect a switch of play. Right on cue, Thierry Henry picks it up. Give and go. Henri driving to the byline. Nice ball, all scoop turn. Recycling, one touch passing from the Italians, but unable to really get Mbappe into his strides. Probably looking for a double step over exit. It's fantastic defending from the Netherlands. Moving across as a unit, giving up little space inside that 18 yard box. They're going to be happy now just to see this one through to half time. Look to generate that last attack and try and work a golden opportunity for themselves. 
that man, Vanja, he makes them run. <laughs> But well, they say, no, get back in your position, don't go any further. You can't miss him. <laughs> no. Takes up half the screen. Nil-nil at half-time. In our first leg of FIFA, both coaches and third players more than happy to be involved. Hollywood not deciding to use the coaching tool. This doesn't... They always look like they're arguing, like the one the one comment away from starting a brawl. <laughs> As we go ahead and take a look at the Italian chance that we saw in that first half of the first leg. You see the run, nice and early. The Netherlands switch onto it. Van Dijk's there, but Socrates just takes it past. Again, I, I reiterate, it's a brilliant strike just to kind of take that confidence to say, I'm going to try and get this on target. When you're having your first opportunity, the last thing you want is to fluff your lines, put it wide, maybe red time to finish. Let's just ensure that we work the goalkeeper. We know Danny, outside, lovely. In the game. In the game. Passionate, Passionate. beast. I like these conversations though. It just shows that even in a first half where it was cagey, you know, yes, a few passes a lot to talk about. They're talking about it. They're having those conversations with each other, looking to find any sort of angle, any extra inch you can get to break past this Netherlands team. And on the other side of it, the Dutch, there was a little bit of communication with Renzo. He pulled something up on the coaching tool. They were talking through it. Do we protect? I mean, you're not going to see a change yet, but... I knew Bashaw had probably sat there behind thinking. Also, when you're watching, you can pick up, I think, a little bit more. Like, when you're sat behind, you might spot a weakness. You might spot something that the Italians are doing. When you're playing, it's a completely different experience. It is, and that's where Renzo uh, Manu would have just been saying to their two players, Emre and Levy, this is maybe an area where we can look to... This is where we can get in. Yeah, yeah, get in behind. Sometimes, though, if you've only got one message to deliver, say the message, let's wait. There's no need to overcomplicate it. Make your messages precise and clear. No small talk? No small talk. You're not a fan of the small talk when you're in the booth coaching? No. Our breakfast, fellas, what did we have? <laughs> Eggs were nice. Waffles were good. Certainly were. Netherlands back underway for the second half. No changes in personnel or on the pitch. You see that run at the top of the screen. The Netherlands have done very well. There's a couple of holes that they could have exploited. The pass is waywards, and once again, you're just not quite seeing that cutting edge. Multiple times for Netherlands, where they're trying so hard to get it into that final third, into your attackers, into your strikers. They're looking for that driven pass. They're being forced with it. Sometimes when your player's got green space around him, he's got two or three seconds to carry that ball forward themselves. You can just look to do that. Instead, the Netherlands, they want to get forward quick. They want to be direct. They play too fast. Yeah, and we know from what we've seen from Italy, if you give them the ball back time and time again, they will grind you down. They're happy to be slow and patient where needed. You see Socrates out of position at the back. The Netherlands certainly saw that, tried to exploit it, but Italy with enough bodies around the ball to make sure that there wasn't space to be attacked into. Hakimi's getting some running in with his teammate of PSG down that right-hand side, and Mbappe linking into De Jong. Where we're passing the middle of the pitch, and it could be capitalised on here from Italy, one touch passing, it's going to rebound very fortunately, scrappy in the box and it will go out for a corner. We have got a pause, two thirds completed. I really like that change of tempo from the Netherlands there, that one touch and then pass or a first time pass, it got into R9 and the space just opened up, I think Italy were a little bit like, we, we maybe wanted a skill move and they went for that shot, the block comes through. It was a huge opportunity where if they would have just drove and maybe looked to take the defenders on to create a better angle, it could have been first blood over to Italy. Either way though, a corner to work as Caccia gets across his messages. This to me looks like they've just used a quick PlayStation tool to, to go back, save the recent gameplay and they're watching it back now. Yeah, and that's something that players at home can, if you have that PlayStation, you can use that so many times. I do it myself, I miss a chance. Why did I miss it? Oh, what did I, wasn't, I do wrong? I wasn't yeah. aiming correctly, I didn't green time it, I took the shot on a bad angle. There's so many things you can learn from just watching back in those tight moments. As you see, the Netherlands are ready to rock and roll. 90 minutes 
still left to play in the second leg. I think we've got about 30 in the first. The short corner has come in from Italy. Recycled to the edge of the box, into R9. He offloads to Mbappe, a nice reverse elastico, but once again the Netherlands with an orange shirt in the way. Italy looking to test the defence, a bit stronger there with that skill move. The Netherlands, though, very much equal to it. It's going to be a chance here for the Netherlands. Recycled to the edge of the box, Henri, Frankie de Jong, back to Ruud Hullet. You're looking to find one of those attacking players, dawdling just a fraction too long on the ball. The Netherlands send maybe a little bit into panic stations, Italy give the ball away and we go again with a wayward pass in the final third, possession overturned and we find ourselves back at route one. The Savage makes that run, that long throw. It's a giant one, he's going to win it. Socrates just about did enough. <laughs> Fighting for his life, he's climbing up the skyscraper that's willing to reach Savage. Italy come forward once again. That one touch passing in around the box, something synonymous we saw with Danny Pitbull in his E Serie A victory with Juventus Desire earlier on this season. Just being able to go bang, 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 one touch, one touch, one touch, and then taking the shot. Certainly see that's what they're wanting to achieve in the final third, and they're getting close but can't quite create that final pass to open up the space for a strike at goal. Yeah, they'll look to keep working that as and where they can. Sometimes being slow, sometimes being direct and quick. It's a lovely pass. Unfortunately, it's going to run all the way through to Thibaut Courtois. The amount of times the ball has been overturned has to be up there 15 20 whether it's a tackle whether it's a wayward pass just as I say that goes out of play for throwing I feel like you can tell we're in a semi-final game yeah. right now in that first leg with neither still... team wanting to to make any critical decisions to say yep yeah, this is how we're going to progress forward just forcing it ever so slightly time and time again causing that turnover of possession. Neither team wanted to say, brilliant, you've given the ball on the halfway line, I've got a chance to put a few numbers forward, let's look to capitalise on it. Each defence just about doing enough to see it through, whether that's out for a throw-in, just that turnover back of the ball. Yeah, you don't, you'd don't. you rather sort of make an error yourself than make an unforced error that leads to a goal. Like, just so, so nervy. And look, this is what we expected coming into this first leg. Italy worked great in the first leg against Israel and Saudi Arabia. It was the second leg where they turned over the game. On the other side of it, a penalty shootout win for the Netherlands against Australia. And then it was a second leg performance that even the most diehard E Orange fan at home can't imagine a 5 0 win in a second leg. Yeah, and I think as well, though, that also, when you look at that game against Morocco, Morocco went for it. They started to commit their numbers yeah, probably forward. Probably like 3-0, yeah. It's going to be, you either lose 3-0 or you might lose 7-0. Yeah. Yeah, we were speaking to Dory last night and he was sort of saying, we just got to go for it. 15 minutes left to play. The first leg of the FIFA E-Nations Cup, semi-final number one. See so a few fresh faces on the pitch. Hugo Lori, centre mid, Musiala is on as well. Paul Pogba for Italy. Deployed on this left-hand side. Klosterman looks fresh. Nice interception. Can't do too much with it, the Italians. Runner on the outside, decide to miss him on this occasion, and Mbappe takes the space that Hakimi left him. With Hakimi up the pitch, there could be an opportunity here for the Netherlands to, if they go fast, get in behind. They tried it. Yeah, I like that little bit more intent to drive forward with that fullback and just push yourself up the pitch and gain some territory, looking for that cross. One thing that Italy's doing much better than the Netherlands right now is using these wing-backs in these position. The Netherlands are looking to be too direct when they pick the ball up in the middle of the park, and Italy are reading it every time. Cause themselves to just have that turnover time and time again. 
With five minutes left to play, there might have been a conversation about last attack. Not on this occasion. Paul Pogba, what does he have in the locker? I can answer the question a lot. Not on this occasion, however. Frankie de Jong is the one who turns over the ball and with three minutes left to play, the Netherlands will play for one final chance in this first leg. We did say it's going to come alive in the second leg. I hope you're delivering on that promise. Me too. I think we've had one shot on target. It was the Italians in the first half. Yeah. Which even still, it was a... Unless goalkeeper movement comes through to take it away, it, it was a small chance. The clearance is long. The possession is once again turned over. And that will do us for the first leg of action. You're watching the FIFA E Nations Cup 2023. Italy up against the Netherlands. You've watched one leg so far, Alex. Quick thoughts after the first leg. There's not much to break down. There's nothing to break down, but I think Hollywood, Italy's coach, and Renzo, Netherlands coach, I think they're both going to be happy with what they saw. In the sense of defending was good, it was solid. Where they're going to say to each other is, let's try and be a little bit more accurate with our passes and work those chances. We've heard the thoughts of Alex B. Let's get the thoughts of a former world champion, August Rosemeyer, joined by Brandon, Rachel and Mike. Yeah, thanks, Rich. Well, possibly as you predicted it to be. A draw going into the second leg, as both of their quarterfinals were as well. The Netherlands, when they took on Morocco, was, was nil nil at this stage. And then Italy had the team from Saudi Arabia, and that was 1 1. Can you read into that, Mike? I mean, that was the storyline of the quarterfinals is the first leg. I don't want to say it was a throwaway, but nobody went for it. They were always cagey matchups, and then the game really opened up with the second leg. This is setting up nicely. Everyone's gotten used to it. We didn't see a lot of those risky passes. They didn't see the skill moves. You didn't have any of the, uh, the, the special work around the edge of the box. But it's a good game to get to feeling out your opposition. And as Alex was saying, I think both sides will be happy or be okay with where they're standing going into that second leg. Well, the defence was strong, wasn't it, in that first leg there, Aggie? We spoke about Manny Bashore will possibly come in now. The Netherlands in the quarterfinals put five then when they did that past Morocco. The Italians have been strong in defence. What's going to happen in this second leg? I think they're definitely going to sub uh, Manuel Batore in uh, in the second leg here. Uh, if they will do it from the beginning, I'm not sure. But he will definitely play a part. You also saw him there on the cam have something to say to his teammates so he might observe something that he can come into the match and and execute on Italy don't have that strength possibly of bringing their third player in they've got to stick with this pairing that we've seen in this first leg Brandon yeah well I think you've seen as the tournament's gone on they've they've mixed they've changed but catch has been more of that sub player now I think the one thing that we can also look into with this Italian team it's the only team that has the exact same players as last year's competition, which goes to show, one, how good those Italian players have continued to be in the FIFA ecosystem, but also potentially the relationship they have as a three. There's no egos in that booth and they just want to win. That's what they're here to do. Well, it's now Renzo as well versus Hollywood. How do they both kind of do the team talks at halftime? Very different characters, aren't they here? One's a, a massive content creator in the form of Hollywood and Renzo is this world class coach. Well, the irony in that is that I, I actually feel that Hollywood's rather quiet and subdued when you're looking uh, at the group of Italians. Whereas on stream, if he's producing content, he is kind of the main show. He is Hollywood and Renzo is very active. You get all sorts of different reactions and you see him going over the tactical board. But again, just to, to kind of set up the second leg, I feel like both sides are okay with it. The Italians always wanted a low scoring affair. They're a defensive team and then they look to take advantage of those opportunities when they present themselves. Yeah, well, that's the Italians just sitting there. Danny Pitbull then and Oberon, the two guys going to stick in the seats. We're pretty sure Hollywood then in the darker blue jacket and then catch up with him there. And then this is Yilmaz. At the moment, he's still in the seat. I guess, Aggie, it comes down to whether Levy wants to sub him out. Actually, Renzo's thoughts sometimes go out the window. It seems that Levy is very much the captain here and actually can't see him in his seat, which maybe means he's taking a quick break. Yeah, I think that it's an it's a decision that they, they make together. But obviously, if one of the players, or in particularly uh, Levy, sees something, he's gonna he's gonna mention it to to the coach, to Renzo, and uh, he's eventually gonna make that final decision whether it's happening or not. But as it stands right now, Mike said it summed it up pretty well. I mean, both teams are cancelling each other out right now. It's natural. It's a semi-final at a World Cup. You don't want to take the chances and. The chance will come for one of them, and I see it go um, 
to a one goal victory for one of the teams here. I mean, even the casters there, Brandon, were saying there's not much to read into it, there's not much to break down. Even if you are Manny Bashore and you're sitting behind, can he look at that a little bit differently from us and, and Rich and Alex there and say, I saw that and that's where there's a weakness? It definitely does help, doesn't it, having that third eye on the game, having a, a chance to sit back without the pressure. I think there, there could be a change if the game does stay at nil-nil. I don't think we'll see it now before a, a ball's been kicked in the second leg. But what do we know about this Dutch team? They don't mind making subs, what, 60, 70 minutes into the game if they feel like we could be going into extra time. That's when Manny Bashaw might come in with a fresh set of ideas. Okay, well, let's go back to the Italian team. We know there's a lot of love for these guys in the house and coming in on social media as well. Let's read a couple of good luck messages that have been sent in for the Azzurri. Ciao ragazzi, un saluto a tutta la community della I Nazionale. Ci state facendo sognare. In bocca al lupo per oggi è Forza Italia. Ciao ragazzi, ci siamo. Che siete dei fenomeni lo sapevamo già, ora però lo sta vedendo tutto il mondo. Purtroppo arrivati a questo livello anche il minimo errore può fare la differenza, lo sapete. Ma noi abbiamo quella cazzimma e siamo abituati a certe imprese. Ricordate però una cosa, noi non dobbiamo dimostrare niente a nessuno. Vincete questo mondiale per tutte le persone, per tutti noi che vi stiamo guardando, ma soprattutto vincetelo per voi. Ah, Obrun, Francesco. Sono, sei il mio più grande orgoglio, e non solo perché hai seguito la tua passione da piccolo, ma soprattutto perché hai fatto mille sacrifici e hai buttato sudore. Quindi mi raccomando, sei lì perché nessuno al mondo lo merita più di te. Quindi forza Italia, in bocca al lupo e annientateli. A tutti i ragazzi della Nazionale un in bocca al lupo, siamo orgogliosi di voi. Un bacio, in bocca al lupo. Well, some lovely words there, and the Italians getting a little bit emotional as well at watching those good luck must messages come in. I didn't know that was coming. Wow. And I, they obviously didn't know that was coming either. And you see the unity there, the support, and I think it also breeds a little bit of accountability when you prepare for an event. Uh, you know that you're representing your nation fully and that you have so many people back home that have that expectation and really have so much belief in, in these players as individuals and as a collective. Well, we are ready then with our second leg. Nothing to separate these two sides going into this one. So let's hand back over to Rich and Alex to see if anyone can break the deadlock. Thank you very much, guys, on the desk. Uh, good stuff as always. We're back underway with no time left to go. I mean, if I'm down on the stage in that Italian booth, I'm getting emotional before we kick off the second leg. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. I think if I'm Holland, Netherlands, there I'm going. Yeah, carry on playing the Italian messages. Take their attention away <laughs> from the game. Get them focused on something else, maybe a little bit emotional, seeing that support come through. Let's see how Italy take that inspiration into their game. Well, see, it's going to do one or two things. It will either G them up or maybe take their focus ever so slightly off their task at hand. And I can guarantee you, if you do take a second away from this game if you are Italian in that booth right now the Netherlands will punish you there's no one thing changes you know, as well yeah Emery and Levy if you give them just half an inch oh. they will pounce they will take it every single time they're so clinical when they are in those positions Italy have to remain focused but so far in the first 10 minutes they look pretty pretty calm This is Italy in the second leg of action. If you are just joining us, FIFA Free Nations Cup semi-final. If you win this game, $150,000 guaranteed power shot. Sells off the bar after a nice deflection on its way through. Short corner, Thierry Henry recycled to the edge of the box. Mbappe into Usman Dembele. Now Jude Bellingham gets involved. It's nice, it's precise for Italy having to go back to potentially find another way out. The Italians once again with that one-touch passing in around the box. Usman Dembele into R9, his shot deflected, it will rebound. Offside. Yeah, again, as Italy look to build up, they're happy to go back and recycle, work their way into that final third slowly. 
But then it's, there's a moment. There's a time where they say, now, let's flip that switch. Let's go. Let's be quicker. Let's be direct. Looking to change that tempo and catch the Netherlands off guard to get into that 18-yard box. But just not got that extra clinical must to try and take those defenders on. Rousselon getting a lot of space here. Cuts it back to the Netherlands. Inside the opening 20 minutes of leg number two will break the deadlock. It was all about the ball out wide. They gave him too much space. He went into it. One Frenchman to another. Thierry Henry puts the Netherlands 1-0 up. The pitch just opened for Rousselon to drive into that space. Italy just didn't respect it. They didn't get out to that byline to say, no, you cannot go any further. The simple cutback and probably one of the most easiest finishes the Netherlands will have in this tournament. And we saw what the Netherlands did against Morocco when they got a goal in the second leg. They put five past them. Will we start to see the Netherlands flex their muscles on the main stage? You promised that the second leg would deliver and be better. A richer bookie promise never doesn't happen. I always deliver. And just like Russell on there, he delivers it on a plate to Henri. And they're in again. The Netherlands 2-0 in the space of six minutes. The space is opening up. The Italians look shell-shocked. I cannot wait to see the highlight on that, to see where the defence went for Italy. It just opened up for the Mbappe to drive through, taking credit full to Netherlands. The ability to go in this moment, one of the biggest moments of their career, I'm going to ensure that our green time is giving the keeper no chance. A brilliant finish, Netherlands looking on top. The Italians with everything to do. Trailing two goals to nil. And it is a flash that they have been hit by. How do they recompose? By getting a goal back. R9 driving in the box, couple of step overs, good defensive work from the Dutch. In that first leg, time and time again, we said how the Netherlands were looking to be so direct into their strikers. It paid off for them there in that second goal. And it's also how one goal changes your confidence. It changes your outlook on the game. It was cagey in that first leg. Neither team wanting to, to make a mistake, wanting to take the game to the opposition. The Netherlands now have said, right then, if you don't want to take that on you, Italy, we're going to do it ourselves and put ourselves in that commanding position. A third, potentially, could be on a postcard for the Netherlands here. The way that they're knocking this ball around. The confidence is flowing. Throw those two men on the screen, Levy and Emery. Getting to the byline, good tackle from Hakimi. They stopped it on that occasion. They didn't allow the Netherlands to have the byline. No, looking to be more aggressive out there with a fullback, just to stop any player looking to drive into that area where you know, as soon as you enter the, the penalty box, one bad tackle, one mistake, you give away a penalty. You have to be so careful. So stopping it out in that area before they even look to progress is the best way to defend it. We spoke about how Italy's running to get to this stage. They were mature. Show something they haven't shown so far in this tournament as Rousselon have, comes through. What they have shown is Rousselon a lot of space. And he has been the pinnacle and catalyst of everything the Netherlands are creating here. It's all down that right hand side. It is, and in that first leg, because they were being so wanting to go through the middle in pretty much every attack, the Italians were the ones using their wing backs exceptionally well. It has switched over now, and the Netherlands saying, we're going to push our wing backs up. We're actually going to play the ball out to the wing to allow them to get into those dangerous areas. As we are about to approach half time here, the Netherlands will come forward once again. A third goal will be catastrophic for Italy. They don't even want to test fate as they launch it out of play. It's been a double from the Dutch, and let's get the thoughts of the guys on the couch. Well, half time.
the Netherlands again. We have to talk about it. It's very similar to what we saw yesterday, Mike, in some ways. Slow KG first leg, as you said rightly, and then second leg, they just become explosive. They adjust the tempo, and you're seeing them put a little more pressure, they're a little more decisive. They just look a little more confident when you get into that final third. You see the overlapping runs. It makes all the difference, and it's putting Italy under a lot of pressure going into that second leg. Let's have a look at the highlights. The second half of the for second leg, excuse well, me. What we've seen so far, you are right, still 45 minutes left to be played here for a comeback. Aggie, talk to me through the game because suddenly the Netherlands just were able to find their feet just before the 20th minute mark. Yeah, they're starting to find solutions and we see it here, just Rousselon playing a huge part, just running down the wing and finding that driven pass into a simple tap in and that kick-started Netherlands. They started to get that confidence and after a sloppy possession loss there from Italy. Mistakes are punished at this stage of the competition and the Netherlands are looking really solid. And that one hurts, especially if you're an Italian fan. It's a bad giveaway. It's in the middle of the pitch. It was unnecessary and it just makes the counterattack so easy for Netherlands. You gave them a gift. You provided for them and now Italy's gonna have to work extremely hard. And I expect tactical adjustments. I don't know that we'll see a substitution, but we will see additional pressure from the Italian team. Yeah, there has been a substitution by oh, the looks but, of it. Curse of the commentator, you, you as it. I do. You as called I do. for it and we got it. I mean, the one thing that I'm going to say here, I think it's the first time we've seen Danny Pitbull get subbed out. This is through group stage and knockouts. They've never been in a situation like this. Two goals down with all to do. Back to the casters for this second half of the semi-final. Thank you very much, guys. We are back underway in the second half. A personnel change. Alex, what do you read into it? They're just going to go for it. They've got to go for it. And you've mentioned plenty of times before, sometimes just switching up the roster that you have, bringing someone else in where we see Katja come in. It can just catch the opponents out. They've been so used to defending those two players. Katja can offer something different, have different skill sets, and we'll see if it can provide for Italy. When we were just watching that second goal back there on the couch, um, I don't know where the space came from. Frankie Young went forward, they set him on the run. You lose possession when you send a player forward and you lose it. The entire middle of the park was open and the Netherlands are having their way at this current moment against the Italians. It was actually a similar story with the first goal as well. What a pass. Ooh, is he? The keeper don't want it. Oh, it's Mixi at the back. That was a ball. Breather now for Netherlands. That exact pass they were doing time and time again yesterday in the Saudi Arabia match as well. Just outside, you send the player through the middle of the pitch and he's almost, he's too far away that you don't even clock him. And then you just play that through ball, the threaded through ball, just opens up the entire pitch. It's actually something that I didn't have in my game until we went over to Italy, commentated over the East Syria. I thought, what are they doing? How are they doing that? It's an excellent way to get in. But time is of the essence as time is against the Italians. Trailing 2-0. Very fortunate to get the ball back there. The constant pressure will have to come in at some point. The Netherlands are making it so difficult for Italy to even play out. It's they been find, annoying. Yeah, it's been really annoying to play against. They find themselves two in the luck, and some teams will go, OK, yeah, we're going to look to be a little bit more defensive. We're not going to be too risky in that press. When they lose that ball, the double press that Emre Yilmaz and Levy have right now is what's given them the freedom to move and play the game that they want to. It's making it so difficult for Italy to gather into the areas. The player look is a moment of magic from the Netherlands, it opens up the entire pitch and the Dutch are on their way to a FIFA E Nations Cup Grand Final. Again, that drive out on the wing, the simple driven pass into the middle for R9 and when you allow him to turn that easily inside the 18 yard box, there is only going to be one outcome. Netherlands, three to the good. Italy have a mammoth of a task. No Manu Bashar needed on this occasion. <laughs> For the first time, maybe? You've got a player of that quality sat behind you, waiting in the wings. You see Danny Pitbull has been substituted. He will not be able to play the rest of this game. Even if we do go all the way to penalties, it's Katia and Obren with the Italian E-Nations Cup future in the palm of their hands, quite literally. The Netherlands have just looked like a different beast in this second leg. 
a different beast than defensively poor from Italy, would you say? Yes, it, on multiple occasions throughout this. We've seen them be so rigid in their performances. The game against Saudi Arabia is one was so difficult to break down. They moved as a unit. They haven't done this here. They've been super aggressive when they're switching to that centre-back. The Netherlands have just took it past the centre-back every time with their ability to drive with Rousselon out on the wing, whatever it may be. And it, whether it's a game plan that the Netherlands have come into saying, look, when you beat the wing-back and the centre-back comes over, be aggressive, drive, take your man on, trust yourself and generate space like that. And they're in behind again. Ah, oh, the Netherlands just couldn't quite get in front of his man there. Space starting to open up. That's a lovely first time over the top through ball, but Paul Pogba can't quite shake off Milinkovic Savage. Outrageous pass. Yeah, lovely use of the outside of the boot there, and that through ball Ooh, comes through once again. again. That through ball just opening up the space. The power shot cancel. Oh, he's got a goal. It's glorious to open up the space. But he just went to the near post. And that's where they predicted it. For everyone at home. R9, chance. For everyone at home, you're probably wondering, why don't you go across goal? Why don't you shoot across goal? The Netherlands just had nerves of steel to say, we're not going to move our goalkeeper. That's what Italy were banking on there. Yeah. It's mind games. It's a 50-50. They're either going to move the goalkeeper or they're not. The Netherlands just stay. Whether it was intentional or not, it keeps them in that commanding position. What a challenge. He's out of position, the one against Savage. He's getting a bit scrappy. It's Sunday League football at its finest on the biggest stage here in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. But with only 14 minutes left, the Italians have to score and they have to score now. Otherwise, the Dutch will be your first E-Nations Cup Grand Finalist. Two appearances before. They got knocked out in the round of 16 last year. They got grouped in 2019. There will be a top two guaranteed placement, and that will be for Levy, a semi-final and a final at this year's two FIFA majors that he's participating in. Levy stood there yesterday. He said it with chest. I want to go one step further. He doesn't want that heartache of a semi-final defeat again. That is an unbelievable header, by the way. <laughs> yes. It's got a neck made of titanium. With it's six, seven minutes remaining, there just seems to be too much to do for the Italians. Just talking about this second leg performance as we start to see the final few stages here playing out. It has been near perfect for the Netherlands in the second leg. It has. And whether the first leg, we said that they went in... Uh, the end, nil-nil. They were still in the game, both of these teams, as Italy come through. It's too, too far. Just nothing's gone for Italy. It hasn't. But Netherlands, they came out and they just looked more free-flowing, more intuitive with the decisions that they wanted to do. They weren't giving it away anywhere near as much in this second leg. And what did that mean? It meant they were getting forward into the final third. They were happy to drive, happy to take their man on. But they weren't doing that in that first leg. As Italy come through, Mbappe, Fancy footwork, it is going to be a chance for Pogba, and that is the story of this semi-final. Whenever Italy have got a chance, they've simply not taken it. And there you have it, full-time. The Netherlands with a comprehensive second-leg performance to book their place in a grand final. Lorenzo. Manu Bashor, Emre Yilmaz and Levy David are your first grand finalists. What a performance. Commiserations to the Italians. They faced real tough opposition in the knockouts in the form of Israel and Saudi Arabia in the quarterfinals. It was one step too far against a dominant Dutch team. A dominant Netherlands side, which I want to give credit to the whole team that we have there. 
Because you were saying at the end of the first leg, is it time for, for Manu to come in again? Renzo maybe took account to the situation that they're in. It's a semi-final, it's the first leg. Let's trust our two players, it's only nil-nil. Let's not get too hasty and change it early. Let's give them the first 45 of that second leg, see what they can do. Putting trust in those two players, and they delivered. Great respect on the stage here as well. Every single member of that Netherlands team going over and saying their well done to the Italians. Just look what it means to that entire Italy team. So much passion, so much heart on display. I'm sure they will be back. You can see exactly what it means to Italy. Commiserations to them. The Netherlands go into the grand final and Spencer Owen is down with their immediate reaction. Lads, fantastic stuff. Congratulations. You're making it look easy. That's 3-0 in the semi-final, 5-0 in the round before that. What's the secret? Yeah, we were um, preparing for this tournament uh, a whole long time ago. Like uh, the whole year we're preparing and uh, we are so steady in defense and attack, we are so good. Uh, last year, obviously top 16, you've already gone a lot better than that, but is it now all about winning it? Yeah, of course, you play finals to win. Of course, we're happy to be there already, but yeah, in the end, you want to win that final, and if not, it will be a heartbreak, of course. Renzo, as coach, how important is it, do you think, that these guys have got a kind of domestic club uh, partnership as well with the team Hullet link up? They, they spend a lot of time playing together away from national duty. I think that gives us the edge at this point, because like I said, all tournament long, we trust each other, we're a team, and we're even, like I'm making the final decisions, but we're always talking stuff through. And even I asked Manu, like, do you feel confidence being subbed in? But he was like, nah, Emre got this. And yeah, that just sums it up. Great teamwork for sure. Uh, Levy, you've actually got the best record of any team left in the tournament now. You've only lost one game all tournament in your group. Every other team has lost two games in the group. So despite not winning your group, you actually have got the best record. Does that make you the favourites now? Uh, that's the same question again. Um, yeah, France and Brazil are both like really tough teams. And it's probably going to be a 50-50 matchup again. I felt like this game was a 50-50 match as well until we scored the 1-0. Um, so it doesn't. I don't think we are the favourites. I would think it will just be a 50-50 matchup. Just remember, Levy, if you keep winning, I'm going to keep asking that question because you get closer to being the winners. Well done, guys. That's fantastic from you. We're going to cross over to the Italian booth. We're obviously are not in the best spirits after that defeat, but still a very, very good performance. Guys, how are you feeling? Of course, bad. Uh, we thought it was in our chance to, to get into the final. Uh, as Levi said, I agree with him. It was a 50-50 until the score. Like after that, maybe we lost some, uh, I don't know, to say some uh, security of our gameplay, and they scored another one. And maybe we had a mental breakdown where we can see the third one. Of course, at this level, if you are two or three goals down. It's almost impossible to come back. We did our best. We are not happy, of course, but we know we did. We gave everything here. So we are proud of ourselves. I'm proud of Dani. I'm proud of Francesco, of Nello, of everyone here. And I hope that every Italian fans at home is proud of us. We did our best for our flag, and that was that was matters most. I'm sure they are. You have been fantastic. You're consistently right up there at the top of the world. Top four two years in a row now, which is very difficult to do. What do you need to do to break into that top two or top one position next year? I don't know, maybe the, mental in, the mentality in some parts of the game, but I just want to say thanks to everyone, to Dani, Caccio, Anello, because top four is a, is a good position and they deserve the win, so GG's to the Netherlands and good luck to the France and Brazil. And finally, a word from the Federation here. I'm sure you're very proud of these guys, not just for the FIFA they've played, but the way they conduct themselves as well. Absolutely. We are uh, absolutely proud of our team. Uh, when, you when you compete, you can win or you can uh, lose. Uh, so it's uh, part of the game. And uh, I think all the 24 teams uh, that are here uh, in uh, Riyadh are in some way some winners. So uh, absolutely we are going to retry for the next year. Fantastic. I'm sure it's only a matter of time before we see the Italians lift the E-Nations trophy. It won't be this year, but it could be next year. We've still got the small matter of another semi-final to come, including the current world champions. 
We have indeed, but let's just talk then about what we just saw there. The Italia, Italy, sorry, falling again at the same spot they did last year. And Mike and I were just chatting about this actually off camera and you could see the emotion, couldn't you, in Danny Pitbull's face there. And I just said to Mike, do you think that emotion is showing a lot more now because maybe he's getting to the end of his career and he maybe thinks it's uh, another kind of ch title gone missing there, Mike? I believe in him having more time under under his belt that in terms of being able to compete at the highest level. But the reality is, this is FIFA Esports, and this year, last year, they might not get another opportunity. It might not click the same way. The players might not perform the same way. This group might not work together in the same manner. There might be new talent that has to come in. You have to recirculate. You have to make those substitutions, those adjustments. We talk about Brazil a little bit, but like two of the three players weren't there last year and they won the entire title. They're E Nations champions, so a lot can shift in a year. Opportunity definitely going miss there for the Italian side. Do you feel, Aggie, and they had a lot of missed chances in the match as well, we can see these right now, but just talk to me a little bit about, was it their time, do you think, this year to capitalize on getting all the way through to the semis once again? I think they, they did great, but in this particular second leg, they didn't play up to their best. And I think we just saw uh, the difference between the Netherlands and, and Italy here. Uh, Netherlands were dominating and Italy had that one chance we're seeing there, which could have been some sort of catalysator to come back into the match. But I think Mike sums up very well. When you are in these positions, you never know if you're, you're gonna be in them again. So you gotta make the maximum out of it. and. Unfortunately for Italy, I think they made two grand mistakes that you can't make at this level. It looked like there, from just seeing those mistakes, they could have had two goals easily, Brandon. You're absolutely right. I think, as, as the guys were saying, mentally, when you're 2-0 down in the game, you're chasing the game, those chances become even more intense, even more sort of pressurised. Um, and I think they just met their match. I think, look, this Dutch team, I said it before, if there's a time for them to win, it's this year. They've had poor results in past the nations. Look at that team. Look at Team Hurlett. Look at the individuals. Is it their year? It seems like it, doesn't it? Mike, they just come out their second leg and do what? They Boom. win. They, they win. win. They come out with different energy. They're a little bit different. We have to give a lot of credit to, to the Netherlands. And I, I think they do come into that final, even with the, the previous champions with Brazil, if they were to get by France as a little bit of a favorite. Uh, and to Italy, the reason it hurts them so much is it's a little bit self-inflicted in some ways. There were a couple of big mistakes that that cost them that game. And in some ways, you'd rather your opponent just outplay you as opposed to you actually having a miscommunication, a bad pass, a, a poor defensive step. It was Italy with a few too many mistakes, but the Netherlands with three goals to book their spot in the grand final. And Alex is going to go through them for us. We are indeed, Rachel. We're going to tell you what it was that the Netherlands did to get past this Italian side and maybe some defensive mistakes from Italy as well. Taking a look at the first goal, the difference that we saw in this game, the Netherlands managed to get the ball into their forwards and then go out wide to the wing. Henri steps up, he be's really aggressive on that ball and what does that mean if you are going to lose that battle out there? You're playing a five at the back. This is the left centre back that now has to come over. Immediately, Buffon is being super aggressive here instead of looking to cover the byline because he's wary of this position in the middle for maybe a cross. So Roussillon just takes that drive and then when you get into this area, your wing back, your centre back are out of position. The middle centre back is trying to cover R9 in the middle and it just leaves Henri free for that driven pass with that R1X working a treat. That put them 1-0 up. The second goal came from Italy trying to play out. They sent their centre midfielder of De Jong out on that run and he is now out of position. He is leaving a gaping hole here. So when Bellingham receives this ball, you could easily go out to the wing, but Italy were looking to be direct. They wanted to get that goal back. Being very aggressive in that area, Roussillon wins that ball high up the pitch. Again, we see the centre-back move out of position, getting ready for the next pass into here. What it leaves is the ability for Mbappe to go all that way through, get into goal and that green time finish. And then to seal the deal out on that wing, on drives. This is fantastic from the Netherlands. The player lock comes through. You can't see it on your screen, but Levy was controlling a player at the top end of the box. That then means that R9 can look for that player lock. In 2v2, it's not as common, but that then gives R9 the ability to turn and get that finish. 
It was a beautiful performance from the Netherlands, and I'm really excited to see how they get on in the final. But we do have one big semi-final to go over next, Rachel. Thanks so much, Alex. Yes, we do indeed. France, the champions from 2019, take on Brazil, the defending champions. Guys, this is a massive matchup in terms of the footballing world, not just the virtual footballing world. And Mike, how big would it be for any of these two sides to go on and rewrite their name on that trophy? Because potentially one of them could do that. One of them is going to go to the final. Oh, well, in both different rosters. I think that's really one of the major takeaways. You have to be so bold and confident with your talent to win last year's E-Nations. And now two of the three players have shifted for the Brazilian national team. I'm just throwing it out there. I think it's a definite talking point. And then France, to me, yesterday was so impressive to get by Argentina. We talked about Argentina. We didn't think they were beatable. That wasn't the case for France. They definitely believed. France beat them. Quick, quick word as well. The fact that the Dutch side said the trust was there. Surely the trust is there with Team France as brothers in the a house. Absolutely. <laughs> Look, you've got former teammates. Fuma and Leandro Peixoto were teammates last year. There's loads of chemistry in that team. However, from the start, I said Brazil. I've got about the Brazilians. Well, you guys at home can vote as well for these. Uh, a poll is going on Twitch. The last semi-final, you had 58% of the Netherlands. You were right. So who do you think is going to win this one? Cast your votes right now because the teams are ready. They're about to get back in the arena for the second semi-final. France taking on Brazil. Introducing our first semi-finalists for this matchup. It is, of course, France. Here they come then. The Peixoto brothers making up two thirds of this team alongside Fuma, who's been a huge player for them thus far. Ranked eighth in the world, finishing in the top eight of E Nations last year. They're going to be at least top four, if not better. So improvement has been shown. Welcome to the French team. Of course, they need an opponent for this game, and it is none other than the reigning world champions, Brazil. Here come the reigning world champions. Can they go back to back? Two years in a row, no one's ever done it before in the FIFA E-Nations, although they've got to take on another E-Nations previous winner in France if they're going to do that. Conceded just one goal thus far in the knockout rounds. And the only team left that actually won their group in the group stages, it is Brazil. Welcome to the stage. Okay, so it's a battle of two previous winners of E-Nations. Do you feel that whoever wins this game could go on to win the whole thing? Yeah, I think uh, when you are in semi-final, uh, every team can win, so yeah, for sure. Do you feel that pressure's off you slightly going up against the current world champions? No, there is no pressure. Like, uh, it's the same uh, if we play Brazil or another team. Okay, France feeling confident. Let's head over to the Brazilian team again. Reigning world champions, you won your group. So far, it's been a consummate performance across the board. What do you have in store for the French team? Uh, yeah, they are very good players. We are ready for that. We are aiming to be world champions twice. So yeah, we came here to make the objective. Obviously, the small matter of $300,000 will go to the winning team. This is a $150,000 game how much is that figuring into your thoughts ahead of this match no i think that we don't think about that like of course the money is good but the most important for us is being, is being the champions so we don't care about winning the money is like okay it's good but doesn't matter at all okay right let's bring in head referee james from fifa here he's going to do the coin toss we have a blue side of the coin and a purple side of the coin which country is which side france is blue brazil is purple okay france is blue purple is brazil take it away james it's looking like it's going to be blue, which is the French team, which means France will kick off and have the home advantage in the second leg. Brazil will kick off and have home in the first leg. I'm going to head over to our casters, Mike LaBelle and me. See you in a second. <laughs> 
Uh, that means Spencer's going to join me. He's going to walk up here. Um, and what, what a setup for another semifinal here. We're looking at Brazil. We're looking at France. Two sides that have so much history within this competition, so much success, big nations in the football world and also in the, the virtual football world. And before we get started, I do believe that we have messages from uh, both the French side and the Brazilians. Salut les gars, on dirait que Argenteuil, à défaut de ne pouvoir être avec vous. En tout cas, sachez que le terrier, l'art c'est de nous faire vibrer, on y croit fort. Allez les bleus Hello les gars, j'espère que vous allez bien. Voilà, j'espère que vous êtes prêts pour, pour votre demi-finale qui arrive cet après-midi. J'espère que vous prendrez votre revanche. En tout cas, moi je suis tout cœur avec vous. Et j'espère que vous allez rapporter la deuxième étoile. Allez les bleus Filho, passando aqui para desejar boa sorte, para poder falar que eu estou na torcida, que você já é um campeão, essa é somente mais uma de todas as conquistas que o Senhor já preparou para você, porque o Senhor tem promessa, eu sempre falo isso para você e Ele vai cumprir. Filho, vamos com tudo, vamos buscar o bi. Te amo! Paulo, meu filho, que alegria estar participando desse momento tão especial na sua vida. Estamos na torcida, vai dar tudo certo. Great to see those messages from friends and family back home. And it really is, especially in the E-Nations, Mike, like it really does kind of ring home when you get to this level, how many people you're representing on this stage. It's a nice touch. Uh, shout out to whoever at production uh, reached out to different family members and friends. And it just gives you that added element. Again, what this means for your nation, means for the people that are around you. And also, all the time you dedicate to being in this position. A, a lot of people at home don't realize Sometimes it takes years to get to this point, not even just this year of dedication. And all these players have been grinding and this is one of the biggest moments in, in, in their careers. I think it's one of those things that sometimes you don't always see the emotion from FIFA players, but until that moment when they leave the tournament and that's when you really see it come out and it's almost like all the pressure and the expectation that's been on their shoulders, maybe like you say, for years sometimes, just comes out at that moment. And uh, obviously the emotion when they win as well. We saw great scenes from Brazil this time last year when they won the trophy. And as someone firsthand that has grinded through it, competed for many years throughout years ago, uh, I, I know firsthand you, you've been waiting, you've been training, you've been preparing in hopes of getting to a point to be able to, uh, to lift a, ho a trophy or hoist a trophy. And these guys are one step away from that. And for Brazil to have a repeat performance, wow, back to back years. And even for, for, for France to be able to potentially double them up with also a, a complete shift of teams a few years back, of course, when we, they won the E Nations originally. It's massive and it kind of gives another stamp of approval that these are the nations to watch, that these generate the best players in the world. And it's undeniable. You have that measurable metric. I think whatever happens at the end of this game, we'll see some sort of catharsis, whether it's from Brazil or France, as the emotion pours out, then one will be in ecstasy, the other in agony. But it will happen and it's not too far away. Two huge footballing nations that have competed at the very top of the football game for many, many years, but they're doing the same thing in FIFA, two previous champions. If one of these teams wins the whole thing, they'll be the first country to win multiple FIFA E Nation trophies, as Mike suggested. The question is, for this game, Mike, who have you got? I took Brazil to repeat, so I've got to stay strong to that. And this is at the beginning of the competition. It's not something we did yesterday. We went back a few days, we put our predictions out there. I actually haven't seen everyone's predictions. Are you still in the game? No, I'm not. Unfortunately, I backed the Argentina boys. I thought they were going to do a double up after the World Cup a few months ago, but you went with the reigning world champions. A very bold prediction from you there. I can't believe you were so brave. I mean, I, I liked what I saw. They, they did shift their roster, and we should paint that picture a little bit. When you're dealing with France, you've got the Bashotos, you've got the brothers there. They've added Fuma in. Fuma has that offensive flair, and he, he's kind of terrifying when he gets into the final third, it's got to be said. You see a step over from Fuma, you get out of the way. We've seen some great substitutions mm -hmm. for the French as well, haven't we? Like with Fuma coming in and actually making the difference, you know, breaking the deadlock, scoring goals. And he's going to start, obviously, at the start of this game. But it is interesting, interesting to see that, that diversification of players. Almost reminds me of Dax, if you want to rewind the years. Yes. Uh, where he's an artiste in, in, in the box, if you will. And then you have Brian Coaching, uh, who is one of the most successful French players. A lot of history in there. And now bringing him into the the back end or, or giving the tactics and the motivation of someone that's already been there before. I think that's a, a nice little bonus and someone that's been around the, the French national team now for multiple years. You talk about the Brazilian changes. Brian, the only person off the pitch left yeah. uh, from that <laughs> yeah. French win. All, all completely different playing squad. And the Brazilian only having one uh, player left from last year as well, along with the same coaching staff, that has to be said. Um, we talk about that being a bold decision, but I also think it makes a lot of sense logically. I mean, two of the guys, PH Zin and Resende, they have that domestic partnership with Ajax Brazil. They're playing together regularly. If you've got that as an option from an international standpoint, why not put it in? 
you know, obviously the likes of Capaldi missing out. He was really lively last year on and off the pitch, brought a lot of entertainment to the tournament. But they've got to pick their best players. And listen, the proof's in the pudding. Right now, they've, they've been as good as anyone. It's been working. Uh, I'm just looking at this from a player perspective. I win the world title, I expect to still be in that squad. Just off the principle of what we accomplished in the previous year, but I think they've made the right choice, both Klinger and Capaldi, of course, being sidelined or, or put to the, the reserves, shall we say. And then the likes of bringing in Resende, who, who's, who kind of took park last year to a certain degree. PHN we know very well. They're teamed up at Ajax, so they've been training all year long. And then Paolo Neto is really one of those talents, a really special individual. And offensively, he gives you so much pressure. He gives you the ability to change a game. He gives you a new dynamic, and that's valued even if he doesn't start, to potentially be a super sub if you need to shift the rhythm, if you need to shift the tempo of the game. We talk about that so much, but it's such a factor that controls what kind of game we see, is whoever's able to actually adjust the speed. It's not always about interceptions or big tackles or taking even some of the key moments. It can be as simple as we slowed it down or we sped it up. We just heard some uh, loud noises coming from the Brazilian booth there as they completed their team huddle. Massive game. Let's not forget, $150,000 minimum will go to the winning team. And they'll be playing in the final for double that, for 300000 if they were to come out of this game. France, ranked eighth in the world currently. Finished top eight last year, as I mentioned earlier. Brazil, number one for a reason. They're the reigning champs. And how many times have we seen in things like World Cups, the reigning champions come in and disappoint, maybe get knocked out in the group stage? Perhaps one of the strategies behind, you know, freshening your roster is to allow for that potential complacency and freshen it up so that those guys actually haven't won it. Yes, their country won it, but they didn't actually win it last year, so they feel like they need to prove a point still. Definitely there's an expectation, and to, to a certain degree as well, even just getting to the top four is a massive achievement. I don't think Brazil will look at it like that, but from the outside looking in, the fact that you've been able to be that successful back to back, and I'd like to bring that up for Italy as well, to go back to back top four finishes in E Nations. They should be very proud. I know the guys were emotional at the end of that match, but there should be all hugs and celebration. Uh, so many teams and, and, and different nations try to put together a winning formula, and it just doesn't happen. And usually you don't get a chance to even make a run that deep into a tournament. Where do these two nations rank in the canon of FIFA? I mean, we, obviously, E Nations <laughs> is a fairly young tournament. We've only had a couple winners, both these teams having won it. But there's obviously so much more. There's, there's the, the previous E World Cup winners uh, as we prepare for kickoff here. There's individual players. You know, obviously, Bruce Granite comes to mind as someone that won multiple FIFA Interactive World Cups. Would the winner of this tournament, if it was to be one of these teams, would they have a shout for being the most dominant FIFA nation ever? I, I don't think so without having more of the 1v1 success, especially in recent time. Uh, we haven't had the same Brazilians in the finals if you're looking at 1v1s. Even uh, with, with France, we, we talked about Bruce Grand having a couple under his belt. There's been a lot of players that we said might be next, could win it, are good enough to win it. This is the right collaboration, big signing, congratulations. This guy's someone to watch, but we're not seeing them win those titles. And I, I, th I think at a certain degree, that's kind of the takeaway. Yes, this helps build to the resume or the CV, but you still need those 1v1 achievements as well. Here we go then, we are underway in the first leg of our second semi-final here at the FIFA E Nations 2023. Brazil versus France, two Goliaths of the footballing world and previous winners of this tournament head to head here. Only one can come out on top. Brazil look to start things off with a cross into the box. France dealing with it though thus far. And I wouldn't be surprised with the South Americans, just the, the way that they play on the virtual pitch, to be a little more aggressive, especially offensively. We, we often see these first legs to be a bit of a defensive standoff, a little bit of a cagey affair. But I expect them to commit bodies, see overlapping runs, see some of that Brazilian flair and creativity. France here looking to make something happen with Ronaldo. Good pass into Mbappe. There's a ball out wide if they can see it. Milinkovic Savic into Rashford. Good step overs. They love these low crosses. We saw this in their quarter-final game, of course. Brazil maybe with a slight issue there, kicking it out of play. We'll find out what that's about. But France, particularly uh, against Sweden, Mike, we watched them in that, uh, not Sweden, sorry, actually, against Argentina in the previous round. Wow. 5-2 win. What an impressive win. How deadly were they when it came to getting the ball out wide and then penetrating into the box, low passes. It worked so many times. 
Tactically, they were on point. Execution was there. And I keep building this up because I think it's important to reference that matchup. It was the hardest of the quarterfinals, in my opinion. We talk about Argentina with the likes of Nicholas, who's in that upper tier of being one of the all-time greats. Some would even put him as the greatest of all time, depending how you put together your criteria, your personal preference and players. And then Matias Benano as well, that partnership. And the fact that France was not only able to set the tone, set the tempo, they got off to an early start. Nicholas subbed out. But then they added to it. They built off of that, and they gave you some of the flicks. They gave you some of the tricks, the, the, the moments that you can recapture. You can watch again on social media. And if anything, that's something that I think sometimes we question with this French team. Are they just going to be possession-based? Are they going to be holding the ball? Are they going to out-control you? But no, not this squad, not with the likes of Fuma in action. They're ready to give you, again, these different forms of expression. Do you think there's an argument to say that some of these teams are better at 2v2, almost greater than the sum of their parts. You know, you're seeing individual players here who, of course, can go on to win things, and we'll see some of them in action at the FIFA E World Cup, but maybe with the partnerships or the backing of the coaches or the, the kind of shared responsibility, it allows them to shine more than 1v1? There's a level of accountability, and I also feel that certain players work better with other players. And I'll just put this out there, I'll, I'll throw it, Resende, hopefully he's not listening to me too much, but I don't think Resende is the same player as a PH Zin right now or a Palonetto in a 1v1, but he's the starter in the 2v2 because I think he works better with PH Zin and they're training together at Ajax. So just as a, another point to kind of build off your question, some players work better together. Sometimes it's a mentality, it's also a connection. If you're gonna put in a lot of time training together, you need to be friends. Yeah. You need to have a healthy relationship. Yeah, we've seen that for sure in many teams at this E-Nations tournament where you might look at one of the members of the team and think maybe they, they're not as good as the substitute, but they work better with that player. Um, if you're wondering what the technical pause is here, it's a kit clash issue. Um, Jersey, Jersey's clashing a little bit, so we're going to start the game again, I believe. I'm happy they're doing that reset, because when I saw everything getting underway, I thought to myself, this is a little close, a little too close. And, and to your point as well with some of the teams, we talk about Anders all the time. Of course, representing Denmark, just won the E-Club, uh, teamed up with Umit. And I didn't think the cadence there. And I don't know, I don't have any insider trading or information, but just from what we're watching, I, I didn't see the same alignment with that team. When you're looking at Marcuso, um, uh, uh, Ustin, and, 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 and Anders, I don't, I don't know if they worked the same way. And it showed in terms of the results. They had a chance to make a run in this tournament. It didn't happen. Uh, maybe couldn't find the, the perfect support player for Anders as well. And again, different players, especially if they're exceptionally 1v1, sometimes it's a struggle or a challenge to find who's going to sit alongside them and be the best asset. With regards to what's happening here, Mike, how, what would be going through your head as a player here? You know, you've got all that adrenaline and that energy, nervous energy, you could say, going into the game. You finally get kicked off. You're trying to get into the flow of things. And then because of a kick clash issue, they have a, a momentary pause where it has to be reset. What, what would that do to your your nerves. I don't think it's a big deal. The only issue that would have came into play here is if somebody had conceded. I would hate to be in a position where, let's say I concede off kickoff and then I don't like the kits and now I gotta change kits and think about the goal that we just gave up. But in this circumstance, that's not the case. So I don't, I don't think either side will be too worried about it. It's a, a slight hiccup, a slight delay. You go into a reset. We were five minutes into the game. I'm sure we'll be back underway as soon as possible. You see the Brazilian booth there with their Coach in tow. He's been a great character the last few years, really uh, really embracing that. What well, everything about Brazil, really? Everything you know about Brazil and their culture and their love of football. You know, their scenes last year for me when they won were fantastic. They really did embrace the, the moment, and uh, maybe we'll see the same here. But France, of course, are standing in their way. And for me, this is a big one. If, if France were to knock out Brazil here, I think we'd see a real outpouring of emotion from the French because. They might play it down a little bit when you, when you interview them, but I think they know what a big result it would be. I also feel like for the French in particular, it kind of identifies and confirms the best players in France. Because there is a lot of debate, because there's a lot of depth within that nation. And different players play in different ways, which also adds favoritism from a fandom perspective in, in terms of I like the way that he reacts, or I like the way that he plays FIFA, it's more aggressive, or this guy's a little more passive. I always bring up the likes of Maestro, who you don't see in action, but he has been a household name within that French community. I mean, he'll definitely give you a lot of animation, you see the live streams, and uh, this, again, kind of puts it out there that this is the best team that they have to put forward for the competition. I think the Peixotos, having a, a brother, brotherly scenario, is a partnership that every team could dream of. Controllers are getting back into the hands of our players. Fists are being pumped. It's nearly time to get things underway for the second time. Here, after a uh, 
momentary delay. Here we are then, we are back in game. And it's actually started from the same point of the, on the clock. So we've not actually started from zero in the seventh minute here. Back underway with Brazil on the ball. Of course, in the yellow and blue sh shirt and shorts with France in the red, white and blue. Brazil with Dembele. Locked off down the left side. It's interesting down that left side as well. The, the combination between Camavinga and Dembele. Not everyone's using Dembele. Of course, is one of the most agile players in the game. It's a matter of can you overload that side. Something that's been present throughout the majority of the teams is almost picking a side and going at it. They're really aggressively usually working down the right or working down the left. It's not typical for them to go both ways. Yeah, France have done their best work down the flanks. I think that's got to be a game plan for Brazil to stop that threat, make them play through the middle because they seem to have a real strength when they break out wide and get into the box. Rude Hullip to Henri. Dembele looking long here. It's not a bad ball. If he can get there before the keeper, he was trying to make that jump with the keeper there first. And again, you see the value of Savic. We've talked about it, but locate him, isolate him, give him a chance to take advantage of the body type that he's got. Powerful, six foot eight. Of course, a new item as well, shapeshifter, a goalkeeper that's now a midfielder or a center back. Sometimes you see him float into attacking roles. You're going to see him use knockdowns, aim for him on the back post. Just a difference maker. Brother, of course, uh, poised to move to Saudi Arabia along with many footballers that have recently as their league continues to grow. But it's all about FIFA at the moment here with Zahar on the ball out on the right. Goes low into Mbappe. Rude Hullet. Mbappe, can he find some space? Back to Henri, looking for the left foot shot. Good tackle though from Milinkovic Savic once again. Solid offense, maybe even better defense. Tuck the players in play the angles, don't bite on some of the skill moves. That's a big part of what you're going to see at the pro level is you're trying to bait mistakes. You see the step overs, the quick turns, the left stick dribbling. Sometimes you're just throwing out a skill in, in hopes of really hitting that secondary skill or the extra pass, just trying to find some space. We've seen in a lot of games, including the last semi-final, the first leg is a tense affair, often nil-nil. What is it that changes as the clock ticks by in the second leg and suddenly we see teams break through or make mistakes, as is what happened with the Netherlands-Italy match? Typically, we're measuring risk to reward. So in that first leg, it's not worth the risk to push a bunch of bodies forward. However, in the second leg, the fact that you might be able to take the lead or extend your lead, you're more willing to commit those bodies because you know the clock's now on your side. You're putting your opposition under additional pressure. Uh, in this case, it's more so about being risk adverse. And then if somebody does make a, a mistake, you've got to capitalize. French pressure trying to get this ball back for Brazil, handling it well. Mbappe. Dispossessed, potential free kick there. Advantage, I believe, played. Brazil still on the ball here with the Brazilian in Militao. Zahar. Mbappe. Looking for that opening. Back to Zahar on the right. Will he cross it in? He does. He's onside. Back here. It's almost beautiful. If deliberate, would have been a fantastic team goal, Mike. No doubt deliberate. You saw them triggering the run again uh, with Savic. Savic seems to be the the late addition to a lot of those attacks. Typically, you'd think it would be a rude hullet getting forward, long hair, galloping through the midfield. But Savic is kind of taking that role, and especially for Brazil. Chance for France. And there's the box. We've seen them do Ooh. that a couple times in the quarterfinal. The same move with Milinkovic, Savic, step over onto the left foot, shot. Saved on that occasion, but scored a fantastic goal. Using the same technique in the previous match against Argentina. Clever setup there as well with the uh, ball roll into the Travella also overpowered this year, fits into the meta. See an early outlet there, a little sloppy from Brazil. But both sides have had, let's say, half chances. Not a, not a massive opportunity just yet, not that 1v1. Uh, and it's been a pretty even game. Yeah, France have been confined to outside-the-box shots. They've had two of them. Brazil yet to shoot, but they did get that fantastic pass right into the six-yard box. Could have been special. 50-50 more or less on possession as well. Not much between these two sides at the moment. Mistake from Brazil as Balak intercepts. Now France can plan their next attack. Oh. Very dangerous pass, well read by the Brazilians. Can they make them pay? No. You might be asked some questions. Yes, that's right, you're seeing Buffon uh, as, as a centre-back. Another one of those items 
that has uh, been updated or converted from a goalkeeper to uh, an outfield position. We've seen a collective of them, and they've all made appearances over the course of the week. The approach half time in his first leg, semi final. One final spot's already been claimed by the Dutch. The Netherlands are there, they're waiting to find out who they'll play. Will it be France or will it be Brazil? Will it be an all European final or will it be a fantastic matchup between the Dutch and the Brazilian? Either way, we're in for a, a fantastic game. Milinkovic Savic on the ball. Seen him sting the gloves of the goalkeeper once already today as he plays it in low to Ronaldo. Kamavinga there as the whistle is blown. No goals yet. Still a very tight match. No one really edging that half, Mike. Not overly uh, event eventful half, but uh, at the same time, both teams went for it. They did commit bodies. OK, we're going to hand things over to Alex and Aga now to see what they thought of that first half. Yeah, very good start to the first half there in the semi-final. I thought France Aggie putting out a little bit of pressure on Brazil, but both teams just kind of finding their way into the game. Yeah, still finding out how to break down the opponent. I think both teams had small chances and showed small, in, in small periods they had, uh, had the game, uh, each of them. So nothing really to separate so far, but luckily for both of the teams they have still three more have to play. They do indeed, and this was a chance for Brazil looking for that cut back off across. Fanja just, don't know whether he got that pass off there or the touch wasn't great. Either way, an opportunity missed. Back over to Spencer and Mike. Thanks guys, yes, back on the way in this second half. Will we see a breakthrough in this match? Will we have to wait for the second leg as we did in the previous semi-final? I'm not bad about that opener. I don't think that we saw necessarily a, a extremely defensive first half. Chance here for Brazil on the overlap. Zahar getting forward. Waiting for the right Ooh. pass. Good stuff here into Henri. Does he shoot on the left foot? Maybe takes a little bit too long. No foul, says the ref. And France survive. Tries to set up that elastic to change direction. At this point, most of uh, the players on the pitch can go either way. We're looking at five-star weak foots a lot of forms and opportunities in terms of some of that expression. But I was, what I was saying is that it didn't feel like that defensive uh, of a first half, just no major mistake on the defensive end. We didn't talk about those breakaways or anything like that. Mbappe bursting into the box, gets the shot off, fantastic diving Ooh. save from the Belgian, Thibaut Courtois. How many times have we seen that one work for the French? De Bruyne, here he is again. Oh, it's another oh. save. And you really think now, Mike, after these chances, the French would have liked to have got at least one goal. I can't believe that Courtois saves that. A little bit of some goalkeeper movement, but you're in the right place. If you're, if you're a fan uh, of the French, you got to convert from there. Beautiful step over. Savage, a lot of time to work with. Played a 50-50 game with Courtois and didn't win it. Looking for an opening here. Acrobatic clearance from Zahar. And despite having Savage in the team, don't see a lot of aerial crosses and long balls from the French. It's always on the deck. You gotta go where it feels natural. I always talk about fluidity and authenticity to your gameplay. Mbappe looks for that pass, Rude Hullet, ready and waiting to receive the ball. Almost did too much, but gets it away. Dembele. Brazil's gotta be careful here as well. Uh, you can see the change of tempo, some of the pressure from France. Uh, there's the pause has been cued. Maybe they're hearing me talk about it a little bit, but it didn't seem like the halftime team talk was in their favor. You could almost feel as if it was a matter of time now for France to break through and have the opener. Back four in use for Brazil against the back five of the French. Mm. You can see a, a big change there as well. We're having Pogba come on, which now gives you a more sizable winger. Uh, reason that, that, that can be important, not only fresh legs, a little more powerful than the likes of a Dembele, and if you need to go with an aerial approach, whether you're whipping it across or even a knockdown. Sometimes those outlets, when you're feeling additional pressure, you gotta feel like you have a safe matchup. I often like to have a taller player as uh, someone that's aligned with one of the fullbacks, where he's going up against a fullback or a winger, and I know my six foot three, six foot four pog was gonna win that header, at least for a knockdown, or throw off that fullback. It, it stops some of those instant counter attacks. No doubt, as Brazil switch from side to side here, not having the same amount of chances as the French have had in this tie so far, but we know what these guys are capable of. At any moment, they could find that all-important breakthrough, but the French just look so busy in their defending and so ready to press the minute they lose possession. 
They really have impressed me in the previous quarterfinal, knocking out many people's favourites in Argentina, fairly comfortably, may I add. And now going up against the reigning champs, could they take the lead here? No, because Camavinga made a huge tackle. Oh, that was something special. What, a, what an essence uh, to get down like that, taking a gamble, a bit of a 50-50, everything has to be right. Brazil here, could they get the first goal? Great pass back, Ooh. gets the shot off. Still alive in the box. French eventually clear their lines. Brazil would have liked to have that back. Beautiful entry pass there. Needed a skill move. Needed some sort of side touch or just a, a, something additional to, to unlock that bit of space. This game's really opening up now. End-to-end -end stuff. Both teams finding a way into the opposition box. But no goal still as the French take a short corner to Mbappe. Mm. Good tackle from Klosterman. He gets there first. I don't love that second touch, though. Brazil needs possession in those circumstances. You can't keep giving up corner kicks. You can't keep giving up throw-ins. You can't keep giving France a lot of opportunities right around the box. Here is the big throw in towards Milinkovic Savic. I think he's beaten in the air there, potentially by him. It was Savic himself. versus Savic. Yeah. <laughs> his doppelganger. De Bruyne to Rashford. Dispossessed there. That's better from Brazil. More assertive defending. Now, can they make it count? Sharing the ball around the back here, looking for the right pass. Pogba to Klosterman, getting forward down the right now. Do they cross? Cuts inside, goes for the shot, surely oh. not. Klosterman making Van der Sar stretch there. Clever setup there, a couple ball rolls to get that angle again, trying to set up the Travella. Goalkeeper does just enough, and we're really only seeing Van der Sar and Courtois at this point in goal. Those have been the two mainstays. Mbappe tries to cross, gets lucky on the bounce back, finds his compat. Well, he's not his compatriot, it's his, uh, he's the successor of Ronaldo in many ways, isn't he, Mbappe? Back to Mbappe again here. There's the shot, green time. Good goalkeeper movement. Brazil almost had enough time to switch that up and try to aim for the near post. Brazil, uh, France went slightly early with Van der Sar. You, if you review that, you can see the goalkeeper start to scoot over. It's green time, but it doesn't matter. And the reason you're seeing outside of the box shooting is people are breaking through. That back line has been solid. Pogba. Pull it. Brazil looking a bit more lively now, but we know what French, the French team could do on the break. Ronaldo just needs to hold it so he can get some reinforcements. Brazil quick to get the ball back, something they weren't doing as well in the first leg. Those changes do seem to have made an effect for the Brazilians, who are looking better in possession now. Pull it to Henri. To Ronaldo. Oh. Was there a shot on for Henri there, maybe? I, I like the build-up. Uh, I think once you make that pass to R9, that's when you need the side touch. Some, some quick execution skill as well, whether it's a ball roll or a step over, maybe even a body feint. They're one touch away from that breakthrough. Will we see a goal in this first leg? It's been a bit of a stalemate thus far. Not through the want of trying for both sides. Henri. Savage now just giving it back to Henri. Rides the challenge. He probably won't cross. We know that. They take their time. They pass it on the deck. Oh, and it's just... Gets a little nick off, I think, a it there for a corner. It's going to go short again, I'm sure. Henri. Opening the space up here. De Bruyne, deep. We know what he's capable of on the edge of the box, but he's playing a deeper role here for the French. Surely it's a resurface, recycle, look for the last chance here. Wait till the 90th minute to try to finalize that, that last attack. Here we are then entering injury time. The French maybe with a chance to take a slender lead into the second leg. Klosterman looks for that low pass. De Bruyne now, does he shoot? Sneaky little reverse pass to Mbappe, goes down. Referee's having none of it, and that will be all she wrote for the first leg. A tense, nil-nil affair. Not a great deal between the two sides, Mike. It's high-level FIFA, though. If you review that, again, as you were saying, it, this is not one of those nil-nils where you didn't have opportunities, you didn't have chances, you didn't have any of those final breakdowns. It, it's just maybe more credit to the defensive side, big steps, and also key goalkeeper movement. Fascinating matchup there between the two teams. We're going to be back underway for the second leg shortly. Uh, Rachel, what did you make of that first leg? Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, well, I felt like I'm sure the boys do as well, that France had quite a few chances, especially after the second half there, where, again, we spoke about that, continued to be nil-nil. Again, a bit like Italy, Alex, a couple of missed chances, which really could have changed how we look at this game.
A couple of missed chances from both teams, but like Mike said, I actually think it's been a really entertaining game so far. It's been back and forth, end to end, with fantastic defending from both sides. Fuma at one point was toying with them with the step overs going left, going right. It's nil-nil, but the way the game's being played, it's very enjoyable to watch, and it's only a matter of time before one of them does find the back of the net. We will see some chances as well, some highlights from that game, where there was plenty of opportunities throughout. Do you feel like, feel like, Aggie, this is very much two teams who are on a similar level going head-to-head -head right now? Yeah, definitely. I feel like the game remind, reminded me a bit about the first one, just with a bit more flow. Uh, the two nations here seems to uh, have adapted faster and are playing with a bit more confidence, uh, but I also think they defended very, very well. Uh, and as Alex said, Foom has been on fire. I mean, uh, his skill moves on the wings are amazing. And uh, Brazil definitely made some, uh, some review on that coming into this semi-final. It's very clear. Well, we mentioned a couple of missed opportunities. And this was actually one from both sides. You can revisit this one now, Alex. Yeah, this is a chance where Vanya just he didn't really sort his feet out. He didn't get that pass off across that Brazil wanted, but looking to work that byline, an opportunity of a small margin for the Brazilian side as the French come straight back down that other end, looking for that spread of play. Zaha, with fancy footwork, fancy feet, and it's all about the time on the edge of the box. Fanja again using that drive. We saw that yesterday from the French team. And this was another opportunity for them. Fanja with those step overs coming on the inside and Courtois with a huge save, which that you'd argue, Aggie, that is a chance where you'd probably expect to see the back of the net ripple. Yeah, definitely. And we saw it go back into the net yesterday against Argentina. So maybe a little bit of a great uh, goalkeeper movement right there and a bit of fortune as well. But you've got to say that France is asking questions to their defense and Brazil, uh, maybe they want to add uh, a little bit uh, extra into this second leg here. Yeah, they had a couple of uh, corners as well, didn't they? Back to back corners. They could not score from the set piece there. Paolo Neto, does he come in, Alex, for the Brazilian side? Now he's up on his feet, more, I think, for discussion purposes rather than sitting in as I have a quick peek over my shoulder. You can see the Brazilians just behind me there. You can see them here in discussion. Doesn't look like it as it stands. It's the same story as what we saw in our previous semi-final, where you get in at nil-nil, and we mentioned how, do you make that change too early? And the answer is probably not, because you've got to give your players chance. This is their first game today, and it's a semi-final. It's a massive opportunity for them to put their names in the limelight. If you change it now, yes, you can't then make that substitution. So maybe just letting them go out for the next 45 minutes, similar to the real-life game. Let them go out, let them play their game, and then yes, if it's still Drawing by that point, I'm sure we'll see Paolo Neto come on and flare it up. Or well, something which could spur them on. We have some more good luck messages for the Brazilian team. Oi meu amor, nós estamos aqui para te desejar boa sorte, que Deus abençoe seus jogos, te dê sabedoria em cada um deles e que acima de tudo você se divirta muito como você sempre fez. É, nós conhecemos todo o seu trabalho, toda a sua dedicação e determinação e sabemos quanto você merece isso. Estamos muito orgulhosos e felizes de ter você participando deste momento que você possa fazer os melhores jogos da sua vida. A Serena tá doida para ter um papai campeão. Um grande beijo, nós te amamos muito e estaremos sempre do seu lado. Looks like that was Rosende's family there. I mean, that would just make me more emotional, actually, than probably spur me on in the moment. It'd probably put me off a little bit. Talking about, though, the French side, obviously they started there with five at the back, didn't they? Really defensive. Does that change in this second leg? I doubt it. I mean, uh, things are working all right for them. Um, they did almost everything perfectly. They just didn't get that goal. And I think their game plan throughout the knockout, knock, knockout stage, at least, has been uh, pretty clear in terms of uh, trying to break through the wings, and doing those skill moves, uh, getting Fuma into those situations where he can do stuff. So on to the second leg. Let's see if anything changes between these two sides as we go into the second leg of the second semi-final. Mike, spin over to you. Thank you, Rachel. Let's hope for a big finale to this semi-final. Great to see those messages as well from the families once again. You forget, you know, that these guys aren't all youngsters. Some of them have got kids themselves and the families themselves. There's a lot of people watching, supporting them from home. And will they make them proud? I'm sure they will, whatever the result, as France look to break into the box. You have to say, until this point at least, Brazilian have done their homework and stopped those threats that 
you know, were caused so many problems for Argentina in the previous game. Unless I eat my words here and France break through. No, once again, Brazil equal to it. And I like seeing the smiles. That, that might sound like a, a funny bit of feedback, but to a certain degree, you still need to be comfortable on the big stage. Brazil will be fuming if something comes of this because they had dispossessed France. They overplayed it. End up going off for a corner. France has had quite a few corners in this tie now. They've not made it count yet, but could this be the moment? Once again, the man of the match, you have to say, Thibaut Courtois coming up trumps for the Brazilians. France, though, relentless in their pursuit of an opening goal. Biding their time. Henri looking for an opening. Brazil get it back again. Can they make it stick this time? Every time there's a little bit of a risky pass in there. It's that pressing game you play. You need to get that ball back within the first three or four passes, don't you? Otherwise, they stabilize. I was just going to talk about that. The counter press from France, it's dangerous. It's aggressive. It's confrontational. Seeing it again here. Oh, oh that's a foul. Was nearly on display, Spence. I think that's a bit harsh there from the referee, if I'm honest. I will say this, though. If you're Brazil, if you can break through to the midfield and you go quickly, you will have a little bit of chance for a break. Yeah, we've seen that they can cause problems and pose questions at the French defence. The ball comes into the box there, Rude Hood it, making that third man run through the middle, but Balak was there. That's a good idea. We haven't seen Brazil try to introduce kind of the manual lob there with a the triggered run. It didn't work out, but I like it as adding some variety into the gameplay. Mbappe is such a problem out here. Can he find someone in the box? Varane stops it, but it's still alive. De Bruyne oh. can shift it onto either foot there, of course, but just couldn't get the space. A long, hopeful punt upfield there from Brazil. They need to keep possession better than that if they're going to break down the French defence. Giving it away here, though. Ronaldo, can he hit it? Oh, it's another save! And the goalkeepers really steal the headlines in this one. I just going to say, maybe the first big mistake from France there. FIFA 101, bad pass out of the back. All into the box, header, and it's in! And Brazil break the deadlock here! The world champions! Looking to do it again. 1-0 up, and of course, it's that man again. Malinkovic Savage with the header. It had to be Savage. You see them isolating, you see them aiming, you see them lobbing it up there. Let them go get it. Six foot eight. Brand spanking new, and he is causing problems. And now we've got an opportunity to see what the French are really made of. 1-0 down in the second leg against the number one ranked team in the world of FIFA Brazil. Can they find a way to break through the Brazilian defense? They've had chances, Mike. Had almost too many chances at this point. You could say two or three that should be sure things. One on one with Courtois. Here we go, ball out wide here. Henri picks it up, goes back, sloppy pass. And if Brazil do win this one, Mike, they'll be thanking the Belgian, won't they? Thibaut Courtois has made a string of sensational saves. And some of that's some quality goalkeeper movement to go alongside it. It's small steps, subtle details that make a big difference. Brazil to get a second here. It could really dampen the hopes of the French. And they're looking for it here with a corner. We just saw Savic from the spot. He's just a matchup nightmare. He's taller and stronger than all the players on the pitch, so it, it doesn't feel like a 50-50. Mbappe. Is that a foul? Ref says no. France back on the ball then. The game's come alive with that goal. We knew it would. We just didn't know when it was going to come. We didn't know who it would fall to. The flow of the game maybe suggested the French were more likely to break the deadlock, but it was the Brazilians who pulled through. And they've done it so many times before. That's why they are the world champs. They know exactly what to do when it comes to this stage of a tournament. Well, at the end of the day, it comes down to capitalization, being clinical. If Putting a cross in, though, Mike, some, one thing the French don't do. They don't play those aerial crosses. We've seen so many teams score from it. Look at this knockdown. Here we go. They can double their lead here with Henri on the left foot. But Zahar, of all people, stops him. Is that something the French, if you were to criticize their game in any way, you said, do they have a plan B? Do they have that, that second option where if the, the low pass game's not working, because they've got the players to do it. I, I think I'm still critiquing the plan A and it just comes down to the finishing. They've got into the right locations, the right spots on the virtual pitch. Everything has been on point. Maybe they're not taking advantage of Savic the same way. You can see them targeting him uh, on the Brazilian side. He has been that game changer. Giving the ball away. France can't afford to do that here. Dembe! Oh! What a strike! And it's a Frenchman that might have just ended the hopes of France. 
with a fantastic outside the boot effort that absolutely rocketed into the top corner. And you've seen both sides trying to set it up. That ball roll before the Travella gets it perfect. It's time green. And this is something that Debelli can do. He doesn't have a weak foot. Remember, you can unlock and open up top drawer, top flight, top corner. And this also puts France into a, a real situation now. You've got to make significant changes. And they're doing just that. Some personnel changes on and off the pitch. It's going to be a, a brother's link up here. The Prosciutto boys trying to do it for the family. And you see the substitution and also you, you might have noticed they're adjusting that midfield. They're going to push them more to be involved in the attack, including Savage. And we keep bringing up Savage because to start out the tournament, we talked a lot about 2v2s. I had a debate with Alex. I was like, I'm not sure if he's going to make as big of a difference, but he has been a factor in every single matchup. Is this their way of changing strategy from plan A to plan B? Maybe with Fuma, such a great attacking, skillful, flowing player, he is more likely to play that way. Whereas if you bring different personnel in, it might be more natural for them to use that, that longer ball option, the cross option, which has worked for, for Brazil thus far. Maybe you're just sharing in a little different emphasis of the teamwork. You're already sharing in genetics. Why wouldn't it connect on the virtual pitch? I do expect a little bit of a different approach to some of the attacking positioning because when you're trying to, to give Fuma a chance to make something happen, to be special, a lot of that is on the ground. You talked about why aren't we seeing crosses? Why aren't we seeing chip through balls? Why aren't we seeing knockdowns? That's not part of that collaborative effort. This will give you a little bit of a different look, different variety. Yeah, they've acknowledged the need for change. The question is, is it too late? Should they have done it a 1-0? Well, they have a lot of time. And sometimes you don't want to make a drastic shift, a, a big adjustment, if you're only down a goal. Especially considering that France was making the chances. They were getting into those right locations. They had the GPS turned on. If anything, the critique comes down to some of the finishing. And obviously that second goal for Brazil has come from a defensive error, giving the ball away. You know, Brazil pounced on it. You talk about capitalizing on the chances. Brazil have done that in a much better fashion than the French. Because the French have still had more chances, I think. Mm -hmm. It was a big mistake out of the back, though. Right on the edge of the box. You don't have enough time to move your goalkeeper. Sets it up for Dembele to do something special. Can the French get a goal before halftime in this second leg? They don't need to. They can do it all in the second half. They will have time, but it would be a massive statement and it would be huge for the morale of this French team if they can. There are four minutes left. Maybe just one or two more chances to get that goal before the break. Oh, it's a sloppy pass there, but they'll get another go. I don't know if they've done anything wrong there either, just an unforced error. Is this a long throw into the big man? No. Goes short to Mbappe, who finds De Bruyne. Savage. Rashford can't get past the hard. Not the first time he's made a crucial interception for the Brazilian defence. Brazil now just play for this final attack, maybe. Not that they need to push it at 2 0 up. If they can make it three, it might be enough to get them a spot in the final. Ronaldo, good tackle from Buffon. Still alive, though, with Savage. And that build up pretty unique. You're going to see two players moving. You added in the player lock, which technically adds a third player into the rotation. A lot of simultaneous action going all inclusive. And again, I bring that up because it shows confidence. They're oozing of some of the extracurricular. Huge moment here for the entire French booth, Coach Brian included. What can they come up with in the final quarter, if you like, of this two-legged affair? 45 minutes of FIFA time. What can they do to turn this round. They're 2-0 down against what is officially the best E-Nations team in the world, Brazil, looking to reclaim that title as we see the, the slightly sullen face of Zuma, uh, Zuma? Fuma there, who's uh, taking himself out of this game. It's going through a rebrand according to Spence. Uh, I don't think they need to rush anything. They got 45 minutes. It's only a two-goal deficit. What is important is that they shift the momentum. If they can get a goal, first 20, even 25 minutes, it still gives you plenty of time to build into a couple more attacks and then be able to take those chances. And it also forces Brazil to feel some of that pressure. You see that star on the French shirt? That means something. Yes, they've won a World Cup. You may remember, actually, they won the World Cup in 1998. This exact game was the final. Two goals from Zinedine Zidane, one from Emmanuel Petit. But it also can signify any nations. They've done it before, Mike. The problem is, so have their opponents. And one of them has got to go. Brazil's playing a dangerous game, but I see what they're doing. They're teasing it. 
was swinging it around the back, trying to, to bait for, uh, France or try to misposition France to, to go for additional pressure and then open up lanes of space in behind the defense. And Dyke to Davies on his left side, his natural left side for the French. De Bruyne out to Zaha. Great first touch. Do they deliver? Do they start to mix it up here? They're still going for the low passing game. So far, it's the same as Lloris gets the ball. Mm. Obviously, a World Cup winner with France. Not as a centre midfielder, though. Henri. Dembele, scorer of that second goal. What a pass that is to an overlapping Frenchman in Camavinga for Brazil. Pull it. Savage, good passing from Brazilians, playing with a real confidence now. There's a vim and vigor to their game. <laughs> Yoga Benito, you could say. France just needs to give us a little more of that ingenuity, right around the edge of the box, or even going a bit more direct. Uh, sometimes it's a mix and match of that being the most elite of the combinations, where you've got the skills and you've got the pretty portions of FIFA, but you've also got that route one, that knockdown, that whipping across, that put it into the mixer. It's where we need to see serious composure on display from the French. They can't rush those passes because the clock is against them, because it will come short. At this level, you have to do everything perfectly precise. Oh. And that ball, if it was onside, could have been all she wrote. I think it would have been finished. I expect the formation change. Uh, I, I think that France has got to start pushing some more bodies forward. Again, even if it's a disruptive play to just change or shift a little bit of the flow of the game, because at some point here, Brazil's got to start sitting a little bit deeper, adding in some additional possession, looking for those maybe deep outlets where they can run into space. We just need that extra resourcefulness from France to make this a little more interesting. Again, one goal changes everything. We have seen Leeds fall apart rather quickly. We've also seen them expand rather quickly. Welcome to FIFA. But we just don't have Brazil feeling any pressure right now. No, it's true. They need to be taken out of their comfort zone because they are looking comfortable right now. And that's going to take some doing from the French if they're going to get back in this with just 30 minutes of FIFA left as they switch it over to Zaha on this right side. Still Zaha. They won't cross it, Mike. They, 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 the, the run's not been done, so Savage isn't in there anyway. It's good defense. In fact, is Savage even on the pitch for the French anymore? I don't think he is. I think he's been taken off for the Reese. Pogba on the ball. They don't need to attack. They're not in a rush. They've earned the right to just stall things here, the Brazilians. But Pogba's oh. fancy footwork almost makes something. And you just see the difference from a Pogba as a winger versus a Dembele. Uh, a bigger body, can hold it up a little bit. Again, powerful, been upgraded, has the skills, has the weak foot, has some of that versatility. It's a different body type, a different look, different movement. Mbappe, what a time this would be to claw one back for the French. Davies in the box. Can he pick someone out? Milinkovic Savage there again. What a game he's having for Brazil. It's almost trying to be too perfect. I think they had a chance to go down central there as well. They've been going out wide, and you've got to give a lot of compliments to Brazil here. They've defended phenomenal. They've got a man the advantage wing here. If they can get that ball over to the left. They've got the numbers. It's been held up slightly. De Bruyne intercepts. See your first time header there from Pogba again. Ball Super could have been sub. on through the middle there. Sorry, Mike, the ball might have been on there. But once again, they wanted to go out wide instead. <sighs> just don't love that. We're missing some genius. You're missing some of that imagination. It's very much get the ball to the byline and walk into the box, isn't it? That, that has, it's been effective for them in previous matches, but I think Brazil have got the antidote for it. They've got numbers here once again if they can switch it. They've been too reliant on the wing play. Great ball. The run was ready. Pog was in there. Opportunities for a third. Zaha stops it in the keeper. Eventually catches it, but France are running out of time here. I expect to see France pivot once we saw the substitution with the double Peixoto action that we would see maybe a different formation, a, a different approach to some of the build-up play. It's still too wing heavy. It's wing heavy, and when it goes out wide, it usually goes one way. It's, it's beat the fullback and then cut it back once you get into the box. They're not looking to play through the middle too much, but they have done it here, and oh, no way! Thibaut Courtois has been 
unreal in this game. There's been probably three or four chances for France, which on another day, they go in. He's had everything. Shout out to the goalkeeper movement, though, in Brazil. Maybe that's been a huge part of it, if that is the underlying factor. De Bruyne here, looking for Ronaldo. Can't find him. Brazil, at any moment, could end this game. They don't need another goal, but it would seal the deal if they were able to get it. Right now, Brazil will be progressing as things stand into the final for a chance to play for $300,000. More than double what Brazil won this time last year, by the way. Oh, that's wonderful composure. And every second that Brazil have the ball is like a dagger in the heart of the French who need to get it back. I don't want to be the bearer of bad news. I don't think France has enough time dealing with the 85th minute, already down on the wing. It's Brazil's throw in. They've shown a certain level of comfort, confidence. Some of those outlet passes, they're not getting overwhelmed by the press. And some of that's because they have two goals. The big takeaway here is that there was a mistake from France that allowed for Dembele to have that outside of the box, that long shot that allowed them to double their lead. But you could tell right when that happened, the dynamic changed, the mindset changed, the confidence shifted. It was a little bit different ambiance in the air and also on, on the sticks, if you look at what's happened on the virtual pitch from Brazil. They weren't as nervy, they had a little more free flow, a little more fluidity, and they adjusted their attack, possession out of the back, and then over the top, these looping over the top through balls, where you're looking at Pogba. If you can find Savic, sure, Savic can come down the middle of the pitch, he gives you a release. I think they have relied on their goalkeeper at times, but they've done a professional job when they've got the chances they've taken them. What they've done since going up has been the most impressive, I think. Since getting themselves in that position, they've really just shut France down. And a lot of France's chances were early on, before the goals. Uh, we could talk about Courtois just making a save, but that's pretty much been it when you're looking at after they had that 2-0 lead for Brazil. It has been a lot less Courtois making these, uh, these momentous saves and kind of changing the game, as you see in the shielding now. France get the ball back, and they needed to, and they've got to make it count. They need to score on this attack, because then they've got to do it again. And it's going to take a real Brazilian collapse, but I just don't think it's coming, Mike, as Brazil get the ball back again. Klosterman, they don't need to cross it in. Because it's probably already too late for the French, but they have got it back. Lloris pumps it forward in a very un-French way, because we haven't seen that from them a lot. But it is over. I don't think France will even get one goal now. Brazil have done the job. They've done enough to get to back-to-back E-Nations -back e finals. As the French look to half the deficit, at least. There's 30 seconds of injury time left on the clock. I don't think it's mathematically even possible for France to get two goals now. And it is over. And there it is. And look at the celebrations from the Brazilians. They've brought a carnival to the Middle East. And they're absolutely loving life. And they could win back-to-back -back E-Nations, Mike. The French, though, heading home, doubling their performance from last year, from top eight to top four. Maybe next year will be their year. And as you said, professional performance. Took their chances, limited mistakes, fantastic goalkeeper work. We've got to stress that. And it would have been a different game. If France got on the board early, we're talking about this different, the dynamic being different, but it didn't happen. Great to see the Brazilian scenes of celebration, although I would say they're not that over the top. A lovely little, little uh, chest bump there. But I think they're winners, aren't they, Mike? They've done this so many times before, they know exactly what's required of them. I don't think you'll really see the celebration until they win the whole thing. There's a certain expectation, and also PHZ and Resende, we saw them in action at the E-Club. They probably felt as if they should have done better. This is their second chance. Very few teams get an opportunity at a second go with almost an identical roster. We just added Palonetta to the bench. Yeah, it has been a consummate performance from the Brazilian squad. And commiserations, of course, to the French. They've had a fantastic tournament. They can leave with their heads held high, done their country proud. A narrow defeat to the world number one ranked team in Brazil who aren't finished yet. The Netherlands await them. What a game of FIFA that is going to be. And our friend and yours, Richard Buckley, is in the Brazilian booth now for a quick chat. I certainly am, uh, Spencer. Incredible stuff. Brazil have done it. Uh, who, who, who fancies... Well, I'll chat to you all, actually. Firstly, we'll go to the coach. What a team you assembled here. Uh, how does it feel to see Brazil back 
in another E Nations Cup final. It feels amazing to be in another final in the Conceived year. Uh, we got a pretty good team over here, the most experienced, a lot of trophies, and the best player in the world for a long, long time. So it's amazing to be here in another final. And you've almost got sort of a core team here. You've got the Ajax boys, then you've got someone off the bench who can do magical things. Uh, how important is it to have sort of your two players and then Paolo who can come off the bench and change the entire game? Yeah, it, it's it's a lot of, I mean, pressure to choose which one is going to play. But we, we trust every player that we have to do any function in the game. So Paolo can be as a beach and offensive as a defender as well. So we, we are prepared. We got the best three players from Brazil right here. So we, it's feeling good. PH, I'll, I'll come on down. We'll, we'll spin her out. <laughs> Little answer. Everyone wants to hear from you. Easy, 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 easy question. How does it feel? Yeah, amazing. Yeah, for us, in the final, one more time. Yeah, now is the time for the back-to-back. And uh, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know you're not the most confident. Uh, a man who's full of confidence. Resende, come on in. You saw a little message at sort of the first leg. He looked to motivate you going into the second leg. Yeah, of course. It's really good to hear like messages like that. All my family was there. But of course, we are happy to, to go to the final. But we are also focused to, to get the trophy. And we're gonna, gonna, gonna do our best to, to this. And you weren't playing last year. You were here as sort of a, a supporter, a, 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 a cheerleader, you could say. You're in the hot seat this year. How much over the last 12 months did you want to see these boys succeed and then think, I want to be there next year? Yeah, I think like in Brazil, we have a lot of talents. And uh, of course, it's difficult to, to be in like this level. But uh, like I'm playing for like five years in a good level. So I know that I, I can be here for all years if I want. So I'm going to try this like forever. And uh, of course, be here is a pleasure to, to wear this shirt. And uh, we're going to get the trophy now in the final. Incredible stuff. Brazil, the FIFA E Nations Cup grand finalists. They'll be taking on the Netherlands. We're just going to have a little walk over uh, to Team France. <sighs> Brian, can we just have a quick chat? It was, a, it was a great game of FIFA, very small margins in the end. How proud are you of this France team? Well, very proud of them, as always. I think uh, we, we did a, a great game. Um, yeah, well, it's FIFA. I think uh, we could have scored maybe first. We had some chances. Uh, they moved the keeper very well, actually. But, uh, yeah, when they scored the first goal on this, uh, on this corner, we lose a bit of momentum. I mean, they scored the second, and, uh, well, in the end, they... They keep their advantage uh, very well, so yeah, nothing well to say. Uh, well played to, to Brazil. Yeah, always uh, extremely respectful. Just when you look back over France, the last couple of years, it's, you've been close but not been able to get over the line. I'm sure the time will come where 2019 you can lift the trophy again. France is an inc incredible FIFA nation. For everyone out there who's watching at home in France, what have you got to say to the people? No, thank you to, to all the people who, who support us. Um, it's actually yeah, a bit hard to speak because uh, we are very sad, but uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, thanks to all to the support and, uh, and sorry to disapp disappointed you. Uh, of course, we will try uh, our best to, uh, to come back uh, even stronger. Thank you very much. Always great talking to everyone here. Brazil versus the Netherlands, your final for the FIFA E Nations Cup Grand Final for all the preview as we head into that final top two match. Back to the couch. Thank you, Richard. Yeah, I mean, I think he summed it up brilliantly there. For me, man of the match in that match was, was Courtois. My question to you, Mike, when it's happening time and time again, he keeps making saves. How much of that is, oh, great, Courtois, what a goalkeeper, and how much of it is actually, no, the Brazilians have used him expertly? There's a mix. So, of course, Courtois kind of overtaken even Van der Sar, in my opinion, as the goalkeeper to use. But there's slight movements and timing of those movements that make a big difference to increase the percentage of some of those saves. If you're at home, I'm telling you, you're conceding the majority of those goals. There's a lot happening there, and these 
Minor details or small details always make a big difference at the competitive level. And let's not forget about the selection of the goalkeepers themselves. You know, we have had a draft selection process in this tournament. Every choice is huge. But as we look on to an epic final that awaits us, Netherlands versus Brazil. I know you're going to head back to the sofa in a minute, but quickly, who do you fancy for the final? I think Brazil's got to carry that momentum. And I, I, when you look at Netherlands, I, I think it's a lot of what's Levy going to do here. He's one of the best 2v2 players we've seen, maybe all time, if you look at some of his results. But we have time to preview it. I think Brazil's going to take the final on a repeat. I put that on paper to start off this competition. We're sticking to it. Interesting, interesting. I'm actually going to go the other way. I fancy the Netherlands. I think it could be their time. I think it could be their coming of age moment in the FIFA scene. They've been fantastic. Rachel, I can't wait to hear what you think. And Mike's coming over now, don't worry. Yeah, thanks, guys. Well, I should always put Aggie on the spot, but we know he likes to sit on the fence. If I went with you, which way are you going? Brazil or the Netherlands? Are you going to sit very much in the middle of that couch there, Aggie, and not give me an answer? I mean, it is comfortable right here, <laughs> but I mean, first and foremost, I got to say Brazil is on their way of perhaps, I mean, creating uh, one of the biggest moments in FIFA Esports history. Like, you got to take a look at it. It's pretty unique and it's something that's never been done before. Uh, uh, not even in one versus one, so it's huge what they're doing right now. I still think that the Netherlands are looking sharp if I have to, to pick a side. I just feel like the tactical element there is uh, is very strong. Uh, the fundament there is there now from Netherlands and I think this is their shot. We have a lot of time, don't we, to speak about that Brazilian side because they are in the grand final. But I do want to just draw our attention back to that French side who again could have made a bit of history. They could have got two titles. That wasn't to be. How different were they from yesterday when again they went up against a second South American side as Mike just joins us on the couch. That was Argentina, of course. 5-2 yesterday. Couldn't score any goals past this second South American side today. Obviously, the boys are talking about the goalkeeper movement. Were they just lacking a bit in what they had yesterday as well, Aggie, would you say? I think they basically just played against a better side. I mean, Brazil was defending very, very well. And uh, the Castos has been speaking about uh, the goalkeeper movements. And uh, Brazil was, was really, really strong in the defense. And also, they had the margins that you need to win because France were actually playing a really, really good match in terms of asking questions to Brazil's defense. Yeah, I mean, France, comeback was on. You mentioned it, the keeper, ah, time and time again, but it, compared to yes, they might, they never really got going. I mean, they were there. They just didn't convert. And at the end of the day, FIFA can be kind of harsh, can be kind of cruel. If you don't take your opportunities, you're not going to find yourself in a final. It was the same, though, we keep repeating it with Italy. Mistakes went kind of not their way. Ah, well, the, the second goal they, they conceded, it's a huge mistake out of the back. They lost possession. Dembele, quick skill move, top corner. You didn't have enough time to adjust the goalkeeper either. And, and that really shifted the dy dynamic because Brazil didn't feel pressure anymore because they had that, that two goal spread. They had a little extra helper. France, though, like Sven had said as well, Aggie, keep knocking on the door. Don't quite convert to become finalists. How much work does this French side have to do to beat the likes of Brazil and possibly the Netherlands if they were at that side of the bracket? Are they almost there? Uh, I mean, I think they did almost enough. Uh, like the pre-work was outstanding and arguably the best we've seen in this competition so far. It just, sometimes you just have these moments where you just, you can't really find that goal. And if France would have scored first, as Brian said, maybe the game would have been different. So. When you come to these stages, it's such tiny margins and you can always look at the small things and say, I could have done this, I should have done this, but I think they almost did perfectly, really. Brazil, are they better than the Brazil of last year who won this title? Mike, obviously a completely different roster apart from PH Zinn. Obviously, we had uh, Resende on the, on the couch, really, didn't we, last time? Or are they on a level playing field with that team? It's so difficult to answer that question. I think in a 1v1 format, I would take this Brazil. But 2v2, they were something special last year. You just felt they were building into the competition. But again, on paper, you have bigger name players coming this year. Last year was a, a little bit of a surprise. We knew they had potential, but some of those names weren't as proven. Yeah, Kripaldi and Klinger, we weren't really sure what they were going to bring to the party. They partied hard, though, <laughs> didn't they, when they won that trophy. Well, let's continue then speaking about Brazil, because Alex has a couple of their magic moments to break down for us, including those two goals, I hope.
Yeah, we're going to take a look at both of the goals that Brazil scored to see them through into the grand final. And they're two very different goals as of that. Let's jump in to the first one, which is going to come from that corner. They decide to go short, which is something that a lot of players will look for on FIFA 23. Just want you to take a look at the man at the top of the screen. That is Milinkovic Savic. We spoke about him so many times throughout this tournament. France have one of two options. The option one can be to double team out here and cover the pass on the edge of the box and try and stop the cross from coming in altogether. Your option number two is to maybe go ahead and grab your Milinkovic Savic, which is just in the middle of that penalty area and put him man for man and drag him over to try and stop that threat. Brazil are early with it. They know exactly what they want. They come short and then you are putting trust in your teammate. Mbappe needs to get tighter, he needs to be more aggressive as Henri is going to look on that inside to then get that cross in. If you give him that time and space, you are going to see that man take every header opportunity there. And that's exactly what he does. He leaps, the green time finish, and it's a beautiful header. Now, the second goal was a little bit different. This does actually come from a mistake from France, where Brazil are going to look to drive that ball into the middle. Now, we're going to see that Defender Balak pick that ball up. They're going to look for a pass out immediately. Doing this allows the opponents to put that pressure onto you straight away. I call it the knee jerk reaction. It's where you win the ball, maybe you weren't expecting it, and you just press the pass button to try and find a teammate, to try and get out of that press. In doing so, though, that's where Brazil win that ball back up, and then Dembele receives it on the edge. It's not all done yet, though. This is beautiful movement from Dembele, knowing, well, if he goes left, he's going into a channel where there's two defenders, and it's more than likely going to get taken out. He won't be able to drive through there, so instead, he just goes up. France take the gamble to go through there and it just opens up that space. The green time power shot to go through there is absolutely beautiful from Dembele. We don't see it as often on FIFA 23 because they tend to get the looping travellers, but Dembele makes it work. And it's one of the reasons why Brazil are looking so dangerous going into this final. Thanks so much, Alex. Well, the Brazilian side looked dangerous. They scored two goals in that semi-final. But the Netherlands, they scored three as well. So game is very much on. I've just teased you with our grand final. I know you already know. Let's just see them then uh, on the spider diagram for one last time and how they got there as well. The Netherlands then, they defeated that Italian side a little bit earlier. 3-0, that final result. They were the first team to book their spot in the grand final. Then we just saw Brazil, the defending champions, take on France. That one ended 2-0. So neither of our finalists there conceded, actually, to get there in that semi-final game on. Netherlands take on the defending champions, Brazil, and the E-Nations grand final coming your way a little bit later. Well, time for a quick pause on the gameplay behind us because we have a very special guest just joined the studio. He's a legend of Saudi Arabian football. He played for Al Hilal for over nearly 300 appearances, 270, actually 101 goals as well. It is Sami Al Jaba. Welcome. Thank you very much. I'm so happy to be here. And um, to be honest, I'm quite impressed about Thanks. what I'm seeing here. <laughs> it's great, isn't it? I, I've seen a bit of on your social media. Obviously, you're ambassador, aren't you, now, for the event going on here. You've brought your son with you as well. Absolutely. I think he's been in the gaming pods. Is he yeah, enjoying it? he's with me. And he's, he was like my, my source, actually. He's telling me <laughs> about everything here, about the players. Since we, I parked the car, he saw one player, very famous, Daddy, I want to take a picture with this guy. And I said, I don't know this guy, but you know what? I want to show that everything here that I know, the generation, they love this game. I mean, we want to talk a little bit about your career as well, because you have had such the stellar career. You've been to four World Cups, Asian champion as well. I mean, you've really kind of kept to that one club as well, which I think we don't see that much of it. Now, 20 years at Al Hilal, you had that little stint as well. I'm really intrigued about that at, in Wolves, Wolverhampton Wanderers, <laughs> for five months. I'm sure we're all very excited to hear about that. But tell us a little bit about your career and what was maybe a highlight for yourself? Um, actually, it just like, you know, 
you were, you, you, I were so lucky that I played for 20 years, you know, that time and when you get injured, it's difficult to get back because, but now it's different. But I think the, the key or the main key was discipline. The discipline is, is very important in the career of any football. Um, I remember when I went to Wolves for five or six months, it was a challenge that time, 2000. It's, it's not allowed to let the local player to go away and play, but it was exceptional. So I started as a first one. It changed my life, to be honest, as a professional player. What I see there, what I see, what I saw there, it was different when I, when I was here. So this is, gives me the strength and the mentality to stay 20 years, as you mentioned, and I was so lucky. And this is, uh, this is about football, so discipline is the main important thing. And with all your success, of course, on the actual pitch, you've now been introduced on the virtual pitch. You've got a hero <laughs> item. How does that feel? That's got to be a little surreal for you. Absolutely. What I'm seeing today is the game. It's, to be honest, it's my first time. But what I saw is that technically, mentally, is not far away from the real. And, you know, some movements is not real, of course, but if you see the players, I can't read how they think. They think like a coaches, they think like a player at the same time, and which is really, it's the game is coming bigger and bigger because this is the future, I think. You're obviously an icon of the game as well and been in many uh, big moments and played a lot of important matches. If you have any advice to the two final teams, what would that be? Uh, sorry, say it again. If you again. had any advice for one of the final teams, uh, what would that be? Um, I'm sure the game always, you, can, the, you cannot expect who's the winner today. Uh, I can see the rank 19 beating ranked 8. Then I can see but, uh, the chances, they have the chance Brazil to win for the second time, which is in the row. They have the experience more. But in the game, I think I will give the advice like, forget what happened in the all this qualification games until the final and the final is like your first game. Sammy, this is a world champion as well who just I know, asked you that, I can't that tell question. I, can't. <laughs> I, I know and it was a pleasure to, to be also with the world champion and thank you. Obviously you've managed recently as well with Al Shabab. If you were the manager in any of those two pods, do you give a team talk? Are you a motivating kind of coach here, Sammy? What would you say to them just as they go into kickoff? I would just say two words, make a history. Mm. That would get me a little bit nervous, I think, <laughs> if you said that to me. <laughs> Sammy, I also want to ask you a little bit about the Saudi Pro League. We have so many great players now coming here. Ronaldo, Karim Benzema, you've got Roberto Firmino, just to name a couple of big, big stars. Is that going to completely change the game over here? Absolutely. It's a small revolution here. And to bring all these names and all these players. I think four or five years ago, they mentioned they want the league to be the best top 10. Now I would say this is the step. I can see the vision is not about just like it's a vision. It's a vision with the really active, really active things to, to, to take the football in general and the, the, so the soccer, what I say football is like uh, the sports in general and the football uh, specifically, it's, it's growing up here. I mean, it's a soft power at the same time. The people here, they're passionate about it. This is the secret. So with these names, with these transfers, and more transfers is coming. So we are so proud and so happy and we will be excited for the next year. Koulibaly, of course, is going to your former club as well. Are you excited for him to go there? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a lot of great yeah. names, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, sorry, say... I said Koulibaly is going also as Kul well. Kul Koulibaly, Ruben Neves, yeah. and Savic now. Massive. Mitrovic, I think, in the way from... Potentially. I would watch that. I'm happy if Mitrovic makes a move. Yeah, there is so big names is coming, but I would say that until now, so far, the transfers is like big transfers. Big transfers, I, I, the A class. So I think everyone is waiting for the next year season. And Sammy, one final question as well. No Saudi Arabia in the final here, but one of your own, Abu Makkah, qualified for yep. all three. He goes again next week. Are you going to come back and, and back him to the title here? Absolutely. I'm so proud of them. Saad al Dosri as well. He was a champion, as well. You know, there we have the great players. They are unlucky this tournament, but. 
I'm sure Abu Makkah, he will do his best and we will all support him and we are all to be there to support him and on the whole country. And your son, is he going to be a FIFA player in the future as well, possibly? Um, as a football <laughs> player, but he's playing game today. <laughs> he's both. If yeah. he doesn't succeed on the real pitch, bring him in here. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It's fine. We'll keep him. We'll have him as one of our own. Well, Sammy, thank you so much for joining us on the couch here. I'm going to put you under pressure one final time. Who's winning this one? The Netherlands I was Brazil? Expecting, I was expecting the Netherlands after the game of Italy. I was saying Italy. But when Netherlands went, I said Brazil. I think Brazil, they will do it again. Mike, I'm putting you on the spot as you well. You already know I'm going with Brazil. We actually talked about it. He's just, just copying it. Sammy yeah. here. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> well, then I'm going to go against the wave here and, and say the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Oh, and I'm going to sit on the fence because I'm the host and I can't give an opinion. Sami Al Jabba, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you so much. Thank and we you, hope everyone. you enjoy this grand final. Thank you. Well, it's almost time, isn't it? We have, of course, the Netherlands taking on the defending champions, Brazil. Let's have a little look then. Uh, a few stats, I'm going to say, that they've achieved so far. Uh, Sami actually alluded to the fact that they're the world ranked number 19. A few facts to look at there. Passing accuracy is 90%. That's pretty strong there, no mistakes from them, there, Maggie. No, very solid, very consistent. Uh, yeah, very good stats overall coming into the final here. Um, their last two games have been very, very remarkable. They didn't concede, they scored a lot of goals. They're coming in with the momentum and the confidence. We can have a little look then at Brazil. Look at the world ranking. I know we can't really look at it now, Mike, but number one just gives you extra confidence, surely? I definitely think there's a lot of accountability that they want to put them, put them out there and, and have that repeat. Also, I talk about it a lot. I build the narrative that I feel like Brazil has the most untouched talent, maybe raw talent, and that we haven't put into competitive FIFA yet. So this kind of confirms that in a way. These are your big name players. They come home with the wins. You say we should make bigger investments there. Well, that's a little look then into our two sides. And I actually spoke to coach Renzo ahead of that final semi-final. I said, who do you want to face? He said, Brazil, I want to dethrone the current champions. Well, that's a massive statement. And it's time then for our grand final of the FIFA E-Nations Cup. The Netherlands take on Brazil. Let's welcome our teams. Yes, this is it. The $300,000 game is here. Please join me in welcoming our first final team. It is, of course, the Netherlands. Here they come with their flag, raised high and proud. 19th in the world, but arguably the strongest, if not one of the strongest displays we've seen so far at the FIFA E Nations from the Netherlands. Last year they finished top 16. Can they win it all this time out? Standing in their way is as hard an opposition as you can hope for. The reigning champions and current world number one team, Brazil. Here they come there, of course, with their flag as well, waving. Can they go back to back? No one's ever won two FIFA E-Nations trophies, and they're only one game away from doing just that. Welcome to the stage, gentlemen. Now, guys, if you'd please all join me in being upstanding for the national anthems of Netherlands and Brazil.
Fantastic stuff. Brilliant to hear both national anthems. Levy, when you hear that anthem, it means you've got to the final. How does it feel? Um, yeah, insane, to be honest. Uh, before this tournament, we obviously wanted to win it. And to win it, that's easy to say, but you need to reach the final. And that's what we did. You did indeed. And Manu, you're going up against the world champions. How big a moment would this be for your career if you were to win this? Yeah, of course, everyone who starts playing FIFA and starts getting into any sport wants to be a world champion. So, yeah, let's try to fulfill our dream now. And, yeah, let's give it all this game. One game away from being E Nations champions, but Brazil stand in their way. Always such a great uh, national anthem that gets people going. How do you feel after hearing that? Uh, it's very good to hear that. Like We are very excited to play the final. We hope that we can make our objective to be back-to-back -back champions. And if you were to do that and win back-to-back -back E Nations trophies, would that really make you the best nation in FIFA? Yeah, I think so. Never a nation won back-to-back -back, uh, E Nations Cup. So yeah, this would make us the best one. But I already think that we are the best one. Okay, well, whatever happens, history will be made here in just a few minutes' time. Before we get underway, we need to do the coin toss. We have head referee James with us from FIFA. We have a blue side of the coin and a purple side of the coin. Which country is which side? Blue is Netherlands, purple is Brazil. Okay, take it away, please, James. Blue side means Netherlands are going to be the home side in the second leg. Brazil will be home for the first leg. It's time for kickoff. So let's hand things over to Brandon Smith and Richard Buckley. Thank you very much, Spencer. Yes, what a journey this was, dating back to winter last year, where 82 nations from all around the world kicked off in this FIFA E Nations journey. Now only two remain, Richard, one that's never been this far in an E Nations Cup. But on the other side, back to back champions. I mean, it could happen. The fact that Brazil are even here it has to be an achievement in its own. It's an incredible feat, especially when you look at the change around. It's not the same three players who made it last year and the same three players who did it this year. PH Zane, he's the captain of the team and everything's evolved around him. Crapaldi and Barreto out, Paolo Neto and Resende in. It's an incredible feat that that man on your screen is still in this team, still the captain and leading this nation forward. And a fascinating conversation as well that you had with Resende just then, Richard, about last year he was, you're right, he was more of a cheerleader, wasn't he? he was. On the side of things, he's had to up his game, he's had to reinvent himself in terms of how he's playing FIFA 23 and he's fit back in this team and at the moment he's kept Paolo, he's kept Paolo Neto out of it. I think what you've got with Paolo Neto, you've got that genuine magic off the bench where you can come in and just completely turn everything around. If you need a goal, if you're chasing a game, you put Paolo Neto in and he is a spark. When you look at this roster, we've already seen what Manu Bashaw can do off of the bench. Against Morocco, it was nil-nil in the first leg. The second leg, they take a 5 nil victory. Manu Bashaw was a catalyst for that. And if we're being brutally honest, Richard, we have to look at this Netherlands side and look, look how different it is from the year of FIFA 19 where, oh. of course, Danny Hackerberg and, and uh, Bob were playing. They're two fantastic players in that time of the year. But this is a tournament that's just always caught the, the Dutch nation sleeping. And it felt like when you saw this team on paper, you saw the quality of those three players. You've got European champions, Dutch champions, E World Cup grand finals. You felt like this was the year that they were going to go far and they have gone far. I'll be completely honest. When we saw this roster on paper, when we started to see this team take shape, we all thought it would be Emre Yilmaz plus one. E Champions League winner, arguably the best player in the world this year. We thought it would be Emre Yilmaz plus one. Now we have Levi David, who is the captain of this. He is the player that is in there doing the business. And I'm really excited to see how the Netherlands can overturn this brilliant, brilliant Brazil side. Well, this is the one. Grand final the E Nations Cup. Brazil looking to go back to back. What the most successful nation in football when it comes to the World Cup victories in yesteryear. Up against this Dutch nation, as we said. So good. What a run they had. Top 16 it was last year for those guys. But this time round, it's been such a different storyline. Looks so convincing in knockout players. Well, after maybe a shaky game, a tough game against Australia in the round of 16, Richard. 3-0 win over a, uh, a difficult side in the semi-final. But before that, a 5-0 masterclass against Morocco. All in the second leg second as well. Leg performances. First leg, it's a very slow KG start. Second leg, they come alive. Both semi-finals, 0-0 in the opening leg in 
both Brazil match and the Netherlands game against Italy and France respectively. Don't expect there to be a flurry of goals in the first leg. I can guarantee you in the second leg, things will come alive. Well, you only need to look to last year's final, Richard, wasn't it? Brazil no, no. against Poland, yeah. that was a nervy ending. Went into extra time, didn't win the end, and it was Cristiano Ronaldo that scored the winner. 2-1. A moment of magic, wasn't it? And you saw just what it meant those Brazilian players. You can't imagine what it means to them if they were to do it two years in a row. Shout out Ajax as well. Three out of the six players represented Ajax at some point this season. Uh, Levy, whether it's with the Edevise, them two. Rosende and PH Zane have been all Ajax all year round. Well, we've got you guys involved in the conversation home to get your predictions. How about this one, Richard? 57% of the general public watching this now believe that Brazil wow. are going to take the advantage. It's, it's, it's a very close, it's a close poll, poll between the two. I mean, you can understand why. It's a very tightly contested a great game. game. We are going to load into this one now. Remember, biggest ever FIFA Nations Cup final this is. One million dollar prize pool. Winner gets 300,000. <sighs> And I think so you're right, money. you know, you said Emre Yilmaz would be that captain in the team you fought, but if we look at 2v2 winners, Richard, Levy has had so much success in 2v2 FIFA. E, EA Sports Cup winner this year, top four in an E-club, two, two years, years in, in a row. row. Yep. He seems like he's a player that you can mould him around different players, especially when you've got, what, two fantastic players, two E World Cup round finals next to you. Well, here we go. FIFA Nations Cup for the 2023 season. This is the big one. The $300,000 game of FIFA. Two legs of FIFA coming right up. Who will crown themselves as 2v2 world champions? If you are looking to follow along at home with individual player curses, individual player movements in the game. The captain of this Brazilian side is PH, and he's played in every single matchup for Atlas Nations journey so far, and it will be Resende with that orange circle above his head in the Brazilian side. On the opposite side, Levy Devere, no surprise, is the captain with that blue triangle. That sort of turquoise green will be Emre Yilmaz. You've already seen a couple of attacks starting to take shape. That over the top through ball for the Netherlands. Brazil looking to play down the byline, driven pass inside. That's risky. Oh, Resende. We'll pick that one up the far nine. Did not expect to get the ball there. And I mean, I don't think they expected to give it away. First eight minutes, hospital pass straight across your own box. Way to get the blood pumping. As we said on the build-up. Both of these teams have experience of nil-nil first leg games. Only look back to France against Brazil in the semi-final. Alternatively, the semi-final that the Netherlands have to play. First Elastica or two. Here's Emre Yilmaz showing what he can do. Such a great mechanical player, Richard, this year. We've seen it individually, how good he's been. Became a European champion just a few months ago in Istanbul. Yeah, a lot of people argue best player in the world as well, Emre Yilmaz. And it's hard to do that when all the other players, all the other pros here, even the attendance in Riyadh, say you're the best, to then go and back it up, to then go and qualify for multiple tournaments, to go and win the biggest tournament up to date outside of the FIFA free measures. Well, the wild thing about Emre Yilmaz, 18 years of age, this is only his second year competing. Please Incredible. keep that in mind. Two years in a row he's played in that time. Back-to-back -back E World Cup Grand Finals. E Nations Grand Finals. Brazil looks to be up on their first real chance of the game. Malinkovic Savage, couple of step-overs. Here's Brazil now back to Resende. Big save from Courtois. And it's the first shot fired from Brazil. It's a nice build-up play. Vanya Malinkovic Savage involved for both teams. He was the six foot eight player in the middle of the pitch, if you're unfamiliar with his appearance. He's for Dembele, here's the Netherlands now. Ooh. Stab at that from Oh no, and just couldn't quite find his full conviction through the shot. Both teams had big chances. I Ooh, love the no, press. Emre Yilmaz, big win back for Emre. There could be a chance for Levy! It is the Netherlands! The strike first! You simply cannot make a mistake like that! In a grand final. You also have to applaud the pressing of the Netherlands. It looked a pretty simple pass out the back. They were on it, they were quick, they were electric. And it's been a really good start from both nations. Brazil could have gone 1-0 up with that shot across the goalkeeper. The Netherlands come down the other end, they sustain the attack. 
and get their just rewards. You're right though, Richard, the timing of that press. From Emre Yilmaz, it just passed over to his teammate, Lemmy Devin. It's the Netherlands elite by a goal to deal here. Fun fact for you, they've never matched up these two nations in the nations. Wow. Series at all from FIFA 19 to last year in Copenhagen and even this year. Obviously, respectively, in different regions on the online qualifiers. But when they've got to land in terms of group stages, bracket runs, they've never matched. The first time they are matching is in a grand final. We said it might be a nil-nil in the opening leg. We were wrong. The Netherlands coming out. With a real cross that game plan. That's not something that you just spare of the moment do. It, it's a conscious decision to say, yeah, we're going to start on the front foot and we're going to really try and press this Brazilian side into a mistake. And it's exactly what they did. Well, we also know what this Netherlands side can do too, Richard, in terms of just ripping their opponents apart. Morocco had such in. a good tournament, but struggled in that second leg against them. Here's Resende now, back to PH in Brazil, on the hunt for a way back in the tie. So much pressure there from Emre Yilmaz. Had to just panic and get the ball clear with Russell on there. Brazil still in the... Tendency of Cut the Netherlands, five. keeping on that long throw into the box. They go for him, Linkovic Savage is there on a knockdown, but he's also there on the defensive side for the Netherlands. Yeah, you remember when it used to be Rude Hullet and Cristiano Ronaldo defending each other? And a repeat of that. Emre Yilmaz, what have you got for me? On this side of the pitch, big win from Brazil. If you have just tuned in, it's the Nations Grand Final. Keep an eye on another long throw, potentially. Maybe not needed this time, Hullet. Happy to pick up the ball, the Netherlands looking for a second, back to our nine, the reverse to Mastercar, it wasn't needed, but he also didn't expect to get that much time and that much room on the ball. The goalkeeper movement, again, really, really important for Brazil. They committed to that far side, he shifted him all the way across. Camavinga keeping on his run. Pickpockets. Russell with a couple of step overs, it's nice. Still patient is PAC, oh that's superb. Linkovic Savic will twist, will turn, oh no! Usman Dembele will not want to see that one again. Huge, huge opportunity missed. I love the pass in the, from the corner, right onto the edge of the box, onto the D. It just opens and splits open that defence. You then knock it into your striker, you knock it into your attacking players that you expect to hit the back of the net. So once in a blue moon. Mix from Usman Dembele. Well, they worked, it's so nice, didn't they? Potentially last chance of the first half here. They want to throw it. Just inside their own half. Long throw, maybe, Emre Yilmaz teased the idea, now it's Levy. Happy to play, sure, there is one Dutch player that has had such a key part of this team. Frankie Dion parts alongside Rude Hullet in the midfield. Been the ultimate box-to-box -box midfielder. Drift this one in, here's a shot for Hullet, sticks the hands of Portois, will they get it clear? Yes, they will, and we'll take a breather into half-time. The Netherlands still lead by a goal to nil, but it very nearly, Richard, could have been two goals to nil. A frantic first 45 minutes, it has to be said. Both teams attacking well, opening up their opponents on multiple different occasions. Let's have a look at some of the key moments from this first half of action. It's a shot, and just look at the bottom of the screen when they try to play this out. Look at the radar there. He flicks onto him and he presses him with Henri high up the pitch. Then it's all about the cutback. Do you have it? Yes, they do. And a great finish. This is a huge, huge chance. Usman Dembele. I mean, that's Emre Yilmaz there. We said this guy is, uh, is a bit of a FIFA monster. Look at what he's done this year in 1v1. Only 18 years of age, second year competes, and already earned over $130,000 in prizing for a player that very casually just played FIFA last year, from what we heard. Then Team Hullet picked him up, continued to develop him, and now look at him playing in the biggest tournaments in the world. Fantastic press. A couple of ball rolls just set up for his teammate, Levy, who still had a job to do. And he did that job just right. Back on the way. The second half here. 
And if you have been following the nations throughout the group stage and the knockout, you'll be very familiar there are a couple of differences in the teams. There was a draft process that was followed for this tournament. Here's the Netherlands for a second. Wilfred Zaha gets the one clear. But back to the point, any, any of these nations were allowed to choose three guaranteed players in their team. Expect them to be R9 and Mbappe and plus one. For the Netherlands, they went for Ruud Hullet. Of course they did. And there was another Dutch player on the side of Brazil, Virgil van Dijk, who's had to play his part along that back line. Speaking of someone who has been superb, Wilfried Zaha, shapeshifter, has offered so much on that right-hand side. Yeah, he's one of those players that's just so versatile, he can play numerous different positions from right back, right wing back, all the way up to a attacking right-sided midfielder. He needs to do some defensive work on that side at the moment, though. Finesse from distance was always asking quite a few questions off the shot. Yeah, if you are Brazil, you're happy for the Netherlands to be taking those sort of strikes. Didn't have the positioning, didn't have the angle. Sailing over the crossbar for as good as Rude Hull is, and he's very good. Well, there's one. He can pull that out. There's one thing to pick up, sorry, Richard, in terms of the way that Brazil have played the nations. Brazil have never made a sub in game. They've only made a sub in between fixtures in the group stages. They've never made a sub in between the legs in knockout play. I know they're only 1 0 down. I know I'm building a pitch of early doors here. It just doesn't seem like it's part of their plans, if ever. Well, they've also got a very specific type of sub. It's an attacking player, so that they would only bring Paolo on when they're, they're trailing in those knockout matches. He's on route. Levy, step over for a second! Well, how about that? Two goals to nil, the Netherlands lead! It could be required here. 2 nil down. Both. Coaches using that device and getting in there with their players. The Brazil need a huge, huge turnaround. The Brazilians, should I say, need a huge turnaround in this matchup. Just had a feeling going into this grand final that it goes either two ways. The Netherlands just create and create and create that they always seem to do. They did it throughout the group stages with big wins against Saudi Arabia from Qatar, Canada, the list goes on but also in the knockout stages, have not conceded a goal since a ball was kicked in the quarter-final first leg. Keep that in mind. Yes, they create, but also defensively so sound. And those who on your screen look locked in. Levy and Emery. There's been no reason... Uh, I'm just going to go back to it when we're talking about Paolo Neto. There's been no reason to, because in a lot of those games have been quite tight, they've been quite cagey, and then they've pulled away. You're not bringing Paolo Neto on to see out a 1-0 lead or a 2-0 lead. You're bringing him on when you've got 10 minutes left to go and you're chasing a game. Well, there was only one team in the Nations that beat Brazil on both occasions of meeting them, and it was Singapore, believe it or not. They had a great tournament, still made it into the knockout stages for the first time in their history. No other team has been able to beat Brazil. A couple of questions were asked, a couple of draws here or there in the group stages. But it's so on now, here's Resendo. Finds Klosterman. PH in, trying to get creative from the edge of the box with the Brazilian Neymar. They're in a dangerous position now, the Netherlands. Keep it on the run. The Levy is making it. Zero Juan's driving forward to Mbappe. Is it a third? Not yet. Possession still in the hands, though. You just saw that pace of Mbappe as well. He breezed past him on the byline, got into the box. If they keep creating like this, if they keep getting those byline runs, this could be three or four. Klosterman. Camavinga. Charging on from fullback again, defensively so sounds. Keen to get your thoughts, Richard. Malinkovic Savage, we know how good he is, but he just sits in this back five for the Netherlands. And he's just done such a good job of just ticking things over. Well, he he gives you a lot of protection. Anything in the air, you know he's going to be good. You know he's going to be... That's what he's in the team for, but... 
just any sort of block, any sort of interception. He's so big. And I know we've made a joke about his size a few times over the last couple of tournaments, but he just locks on to a lot in that back five. And offensively, if you need a, a surging centre-back moving forward, if you need someone from a throw-in or from a corner, he just offers you so much. I'm not surprised that in our grand final, the best two nations of the tournament, I'm sure Alex B will like this, is in both teams. Well, it might get worse for Brazil. Henri towards the back post, Mbappe was there, Klosterman. Sucks it in the back five as... An extra body, counter-attack. What a Some ball nice that could be, it's a running race between... Teo Hernandez and Milinkovic Savic, who... Apparently doesn't just defend, he also makes... 40, 50 yard runs forward to try and pull the current E Nations Cup champions. Long ball forward finds Henri. Is there a cutback available back to Hullin? It's going to be dangerous. R9, a couple of skill moves. Let me be back to Emre Gilmaz. This time it is the Brazilian defender that comes to save the day. Not for that long, though. I think if you are Brazil, it's been a, a very subpar first leg performance it, it sounds crazy to say I think you get out of this game with a, a two goal deficit you go into the second leg knowing okay we know what we need to do we need to put the front foot in the ascendancy we need to put the foot on the accelerator we need to start pressing more just be a little bit more offensively minded which we know they can do But this has been a great performance from the Netherlands. Last chance of the first leg. Can't That's go it. back. They did go back. Full time here. What a performance from the Dutch duo, Emre Yilmaz and Levy de Veer, as he just jumps off to go and get a quick drink break. So in control, so creative with their chances. And just overall, what a leg of FIFA. There's really not a lot that Renzo can be saying now, to be completely honest. He just has to be over the moon. If that is the game plan, they've executed it to perfection, it has to be said. For the Brazilian side, Paulo Neto could be an answer to unlock this puzzle. They just need to be a little bit more yeah. proactive in the final third. It's going to be a real tough game for them to turn this around. Absolutely. Well, as we said, like, on the build-up to this one, they've never had a change mid-game the first four Brazil have never made a change mid-game yes they changed in between the group stage but Palanetto hasn't featured at all in the knockouts we want to bring the couch into this conversation I'm sure there's a few extra opinions there I mean I'll throw it to Mike LaBelle first and foremost is it time for a change for a side that just doesn't make changes I've got a bias because I just rate Palanetto so much I'd like to see him in action I think that he's also on the team as that offensive outlet or a potential shift. He's known for being able to create chances, score a bunch of goals. Maybe this is his time to give him a chance to be a hero. He's also one of Renzo's as well, so possibly knows how Renzo's squad plays. So could he be a little bit of an advantage for that Brazilian side, having trained a lot with Renzo, knowing how Renzo thinks and how he's told his players to play? Yeah, for sure. I think as well, though, when you're thinking about these tactical substitutions and who wants to come in, Renzo and both coaches will be thinking about that. When you haven't brought Paolo Nessa on, though, you're kind of saying, if we're going to make that decision now, he's got 90 minutes to click with his teammate, which when you've not been in that position so far, it's now the biggest stage of this tournament. It's a big ask to say, come on, come in, come and do the job. But as just a counterpoint, I would prefer, if I was Palonetto, to have a whole game to work with as opposed to coming in for the last 45 minutes, let's say, or extra time or last 20, whatever that looks like. Do you go ahead and make that decision now, though, when you know that PHC and Resende have been so good so far in this tournament? It's but tough. It's kind of like we, we say it worked out fantastic if it happens, and if it didn't, we're always going to have questions what could have been. But I do think Palonetto is suited well for a comeback because he's, he's known as one of those offensive threats. Well, we can see the goals from that first leg then. They're just, uh, we can just have a quick look at those. Obviously, we got one early for the Netherlands, and then we got a second as well, Aggie. Yeah, I mean, the first goal was, uh, was actually a mistake in the build-up from Brazil, we haven't seen this before and maybe it's the pressure from the Netherlands and there we have it. Uh, actually a very nice goal there from the Netherlands just working their way into the box and then a signature step over almost um, and just yeah, slotting it into the net and I think it's been deserved and I agree that it's a very, very 
risky move to sub him in, but you can come to a stage where you just need to try to do something else. I don't want to be the coach. I'm just going to throw that out there. It's easy for us to sit on the couch and talk about the wish this could or would or should or maybe or scenario or hypothetical. You get the idea. Either way, you see Netherlands is dialed. Surely the Netherlands are also rubbing their hands here. I don't mean PH's in. I do mean the Netherlands. Just because every other knockout game, it's been a draw at the beginning of the second leg. Now they've got a two-goal lead. Surely they're like, we know how to come back strong in the second leg, and we don't even need to do as much work because we already have this two-goal advantage. Well, I was also going to say on screen, you saw Palinetto's in the main seat, so I think he is coming on. And maybe another reason that I have a little bit of bias is that Palinetto's a proven winner. He's won EMLS four separate occasions here. He's been able to get the job done. He almost had a chance to go on a three-peat this year. He looked good last year. And when you've touched the trophy, you've lifted the trophy, you've had all the eyes on you, and you've been able to convert, I think there's a little bit to say about that pedigree. And we also know that Renzo, um, sorry, Resende is very good from that back bench in terms of encouragement. He did it last year as well for that Brazilian side that went on to lift the title here. But we do have Paolo Neto there with the light illuminating his face. He's jumped in to this Brazilian side. So game on. 2-0 as it stands for the Netherlands over Brazil as we go into this second leg. The Brazilians have to fight back quickly, boys. Over to you guys, Brandon and Richard. Thank you very much. Yeah, I mean, look, we teach the change and it's happened. I, I don't know if I feel sorry for Paolo Neto. You, you, you're being brought into a $300,000 game of FIFA. You're 2-0 down. Yes. And, and all the fingers are pointing at you to come and change the game. But that's what he knew he was in for. Like, you're not bringing him in to defend the lead. I said it in the game. You're bringing him in to change the game in a moment. You're bringing him in to produce a moment of magic in this matchup. And that's what he's, he's got to do now. I don't think it came as a surprise, really. I mean, you're trailing 2-0. You've got a player of Paolo Neto's attacking quality on the bench. It seemed a pretty straightforward move. The last time that Paolo Neto picked up a controller was in the second day of the group stage. He's played four games for Brazil in this journey so far. Played 0-0 against Turkey in, in round three of the group. Played round four against Spain, where he has won. He's drawn a game, he's won a game. Then featured again in day two of the group stages, beating Spain and then losing to Singapore. So this man has done everything in the group stages, but he hasn't picked up a controller in the knockouts. But look, I know what Mike LaBelle's saying and I agree with him. He is a man that loves E-World Cups, three E-World Cup finals in his career. He is a winner, but this is a big, big game. But he's not being needed until now. This is where he's needed. Like He's in the team because he is an attacking genius in that final third. The, with this sub right now, they could score two goals in 10 minutes and we could be at 2-2. Two -two. That is how good of an attacking player that man on the right-hand side of your screen is, Paolo Neto. He's not, being, he's not being required to come into a game and get a late flurry and score three goals in a match. Because for the majority of the game, Brazil have been in a, not, a relative, not a pretty comfortable, but in a, a good position. On the other side of it, I mean, look, you already said Palomar is a great attacker. Mix him with PH in. Fireworks, Brazilian fireworks. He could be if they can pull this back. If you have just tuned in, it's the Nations Cup Grand Finals. This is the halfway point between the two legs. Wasn't it crazy how FIFA Esports works? We saw them at the Carnival Elipidores battling out against each other only in February, Buenos Aires, Argentina, and now their teammates to redeem a two-goal deficit against the Netherlands. Well, they're smiling at the moment, are the Netherlands? Will they be smiling in 90 in-game minutes time? No changes there, why would you? You still lead by two goals to nil. We're back on the way now. Second leg with it all to do for the defending E-Nations Cup champions, Brazil, who trail two goals to nil. Will this super sub, Paolo Neto, just give them a, a breath of fresh air, the Netherlands. Kicking from left to right. Levy David with that red triangle above his player's head. The orange circle will be controlled by Emre Yilmaz. On the opposite side, PAG in captain, played every game for Brazil in the Sea Nations Cup. That dark blue triangle and the newest man in town, picking up a controller for the first time in a few days. Palanetto, long ball into the box, it's not great, but it nearly worked. You already see Palanetto, he picked up the ball there and instead of playing the simple ball down the line, he tried a fierce driven pass right into the heart of the pitch. 
Here's Zaha. Palanetto getting his first taste on the ball. Expect that creativity from him that force didn't work out on that occasion. But fortunately, Brazil do keep possession. Big win again. The only, the only thing you would potentially say is defensively you, you lose probably a few attributes. Taking out Rosendo. It's one of those though, isn't it? You have to go for it. Then Ray Yilmaz with Russell on. To the Nebulas looking for a third. Levy, elastic. Oh, how's that not hit the target? Was it a save? No! Incredible. The elastic oh, he sold the defender an absolute dream. Just opens up the entire box. Flashes it wide of the goal. Well, maybe the FIFA gods are looking down on Brazil and blessing them with one last chance. The comeback. Mbappe nearly just locked onto that one again. Superb defender from Usman Dembele. Not a sentence we often say. Well, he nearly scored a goal, didn't he, in the first game? Usman Dembele was part of the eight-player draft in this Brazilian side since the group stages onwards. Every question asked of Milinkovic Savic, he has answered with an exclamation mark. Brazil still knocking on the door. He's their way through this Netherlands side again. Big tackle again at the back this time to Hernandez. Good tackle. Not for that long, though. PA's in. It's about with Zaha. What can we see here? Malinkovic Savic finds Henri, a couple of step overs. Paolo Neto, this is your time to shine. Back to go R9 in a battle with fellow icon Hurlip. Uh, and what we've seen just from the opening 20 minutes, the pace of the game has intensified. He's dead belly now. Brazil hunting for a way back, finds Henri, hands on the ball from Courtois with a corner. Whipped in to the head of Hullet. Brazil still in possession. That's a bad loss. Is there a chance to break? That press is fierce from Brazil. Where's the option? Great job of just delaying it. Oh, Brazil. It has to be said, that that one chance, that big opportunity to go 3-0 up, and as soon as that doesn't fall, almost Brazil get an extra level of confidence to go, OK, we're still in the game. We are still in this. Quite not the best. You see the intentions at least, as you're saying, Richard. 30 minutes into this game, it has been all Brazil. They've had to be a lot more aggressive so far. The Netherlands have weathered that storm. Emre Yilmaz there taking all the time he wants to just to left stick dribble that one. Maybe just uh, an indication of the Netherlands trying to slow the pace of the game down as well. They don't want to be playing at this frantic you attack, I attack style of FIFA. You 2 0 up, you're in a great position. Well, 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 Kamavinga offside. It looked good for a second. Playing the game at their own pace. Oh, the Netherlands. It was heartbreak only. Five days ago, and Levy fell in the semi-finals. Here's Mbappe, big chance from Henri. Russell on with a huge tackle. And Ray Yilmaz, right place, right time. They're creating a lot more than they were in the first leg, though, are Brazil. Lovely driven pass, opening up the majority of the box. It was fizzed across. And his first touch just couldn't quite set him away. Thierry Henry. Edging towards half-time. Still two goals to nil, they lead. Even with a Paolo Neto substitution for Resende. Long ball forward. It's a battle between Varane, who comes out on top. Omri back, offering a defensive aspect of his game. For Brazil, just to maybe have a little bit of belief as well, a goal here would be pivotal. Going to half time, you have the deficit. 
of that post available. Palanetto doing so well. To just get down that byline, but the option of the pass back to Ismael Mbele was always asking a lot from the French winger. Last chance of the half. I don't even think there's going to be any urgency. They don't need to. They lead by two goals nil. Still, Netherlands. An impressive first leg after so many deal deals in the knockout stages here at the Nations. We didn't expect quite the start that we did see. Added time to come in. There was no added time to be needed on that occasion. Half time, 45 minutes away of the Netherlands from an E Nations Cup win. And isn't it crazy how we spoke so highly of Brazil in that opening 45 minutes, yet the biggest chance of the entire half went to the Netherlands. They had that cutback opportunity. He opened the space with the Elastico and somehow didn't hit the back of the net. Well, you mentioned that moment, Rich, and lots of, lots of pressure from Brazil, but the Netherlands had the best chance of the game. Again, just open it up out wide. You see the cutback in the box, just right there. R9, the Elastico is perfect. Let me see. Green it? I don't know, it's harsh. I don't think the post on the way through. Look, look the smallest. <laughs> oh, he saved it. The smallest of inches. Going to the back of the net. Well, a nation that unites over the sport of football. For those that are watching from Brazil now, they need your support. 2-0 down. It might be getting even worse if the Netherlands have got anything to do with it. Back to De Jong. Ball did stick to his feet for an extra second or two, but not enough. The goal changed this game completely, just to is give it? a bit of doubt. Mbappe, is he around the right side? Is there one more pass in the air? Militao crushing Brazilian hearts. A huge defensive interception there. Just a reset play. Regain possession. They left it late last year, did Brazil. Beating Poland with the last kick of the game. Cristiano Ronaldo. It's going to be dramatic scenes again if we are going to see a back-to-back -back E Nations Cup champion. Keep an eye on R9's run, just offside. Usman Dembele does well. Push, uh, PH hit, sorry. Doing so well. Back to R9 is Paolo Neto trying to weave his way in and now defenders. Big win. Paolo Neto again finds Dembele. PH in. It's defensively so good. Penalty. Wow. Penalty to Brazil. This could change the game. R9 with it. It's Paolo Neto, the super sub. Saved. You will not get a better chance than that when luck, you could argue, was on your side. I mean, it's such a, a flurry, it has to be said, inside the box. There is shots being taken, there is chances. The one definitive, the referee putting his whistle to his mouth, giving the penalty. And maybe it just is the Netherlands time. I was about to say they've defended unbelievably well over the course of the two legs. We we're just about to congratulate them, aren't we, on another big tackle there, but the referee pointed to the spot. You may just be able to see that piece of technology in all the pods here. It basically provides live gameplay for the coaches to go back over moments, highlight moments, capture replays. Certainly has been. A game changing tool for a lot of these teams. Quarter comes in now after that penalty miss from Brazil. Whips it in deep. Is there a ball back across? Malinkovic Savage, the ball bouncing around. It's the Malinkovic Savage in an orange shirt that gets the ball clear. Still, the pressure continues to build. Pogba back to R9, goes down to ground. Neymar dancing, weaving. And unfortunately, putting that one wide. It's really nice play again. <coughs> oh, Slightly surprised they didn't take the free kick. It was in a really good area on the edge of the box. Their press is relentless right now. Oh, no. Is there one more pass? Palanetto in the tightest of areas finds Hullet, who times it green. We'll get a second bite at it, maybe. What are we going back for? Offside. It's just moments. It's just 
The pendulum's ever so slightly swinging towards Brazil. A couple of chances, the press is in. We've seen how effective constant pressure can be. But still, no matter the pressure, no matter. Or barges his way through the Netherlands defence. There is still always an answer. Uh, they've well and truly gone for it as well now. The, the, the line is so high. It's attack, attack, attack. You either lose 2-0 or you go out on your shield and potentially end up 5 or 6. Or you force the comeback. Okay, bottle to the floor. Referee waves that one away. And this is where the gap starts to appear and it could get quite ugly for Brazil. You're right to say they went for the game, but they can certainly lose the game in these moments here. Possession changes hands again. Emre Yilmaz dispossessed. PAG in good press. Brazil back on the hunt. Still 2-0 down. They trail in this year's grand final. And Bappa keeping on his run. Hopper would all try and ball, well, ball roll, sorry, his way past Edmund Tau. Nice win back from R9. Possession goes the way of Brazil still. Just saw R9 stamina bar there. He's absolutely shattered. Hello. Long ball. Pull it. R9. Just can't find the exit, can't find the direction. Another wave of Brazilian pressure. When will that goal come? When will that moment be? PH in, this time of R9. Just patient. Hold oh, on. Malinkovic, Savic. PH in. Oh, penalty penalty again. again. Brazil this time have to score from the spot. It's Paolo Neto again on it. R9 has to put it right for Brazil. Does this time. We have got a game on our hands. Game well and truly back on. I was about to say, he's, it's a great tackle. He's just nicked the ball off his toe. The referee pulls it back. Penalty given. And we are in for a historic grandstand final 15 minutes. Well, keeping on one of the biggest changes this year on FIFA 23. Five subs are allowed in the game. Those subs are going to have to save Brazil because look at the stamina bars. Haaland, left mid. Just go anywhere. Go anywhere on the pitch. You should, you should have saw the sort of Resende there. He was lying back on the couch in the booth. He couldn't watch the penalties. But we're about, you're right, we're about to say, pretty defended, Netherlands. Yeah. You saw what PA Jim was looking for there. The ball was bounced around a couple of times. But Nikovic Savage, right place, right time. The ball fell back kindly. He greened it as well. And for a second, I was worried about a red card for the Netherlands there. The referee didn't give a red card. But there is a goal back. And has the momentum swung back the way of Brazil, potentially? They love late drama. They did it last year in Copenhagen. Have they got more for us here again? Harlan comes on, Pogba. Is it a 2-2? Two -two? Back to oh! Neymar! And Brazil are back! Unbelievable. You can't, you can't quite see it off screen, but they just pulled out the commentary box. Unbelievable. Six minutes. The change is in. Oh my. Levy is out. Oh Manu my. Bashaw. The first time in a long time that we have seen Levy David sit out of the match. He's played nearly every game. He has played every game. He has played every single game, Levy David. First time. He, oh, said he, wow. he said he's got this captain role in the team. That's the first time he subbed himself out. Get the young guns in. Manny Bashaw. And see, you, you, you so rarely sub the captain because they're the one in charge of the goalkeeper. They do the goalkeeper movement. <laughs> Emre Yilmaz. And Man how's, how's Manu Bashaw feeling right now coming into this one? The one thing that I like about this change, they are They're teammates. So used to playing with They're each other. teammates outside this tournament. They didn't qualify for the E-Club World Cup, but they were in qualification together in the TG, uh, the Team Bullet, obviously headquarters out in the Netherlands. They've got so many reps together in 2v2 FIFA. It's a sensible change, but 
they didn't expect to be in this scenario. Could be the story of substitutions. Paolo Neto comes in, second leg, 2-0 to 2-2. Two -two. Now with 10 minutes left to go, Levy is replaced by Manu Bashor. If Brazil went on to win this in normal time, what a match it would be. Camavinga, the Netherlands, desperate to get back in front oh. of this tie. Big save from Courtois. <laughs> Seven minutes to be played. Malikovic Savage looking at the back post, just queuing up for a potential cross. Played short, we're looking for a loop ball into the box. Pull it, power shot from there. That was Henry Yilmaz. That means the red cursor now will be Manu Bashor. Milkovic Savage back post. I think it was just offside. This becomes a, <laughs> a very time. different game, but 2v2 FIFA with the introduction of substitutions in game. Paolo Neto has changed it. An attacking Brazilian side has pulled Brazilian hearts back into dreaming again. Last year, champions in Copenhagen in extra time. Is it more extra time drama from the South American nation? And it's time to follow. Last kick of the game. Two minutes of added time. And they are in the half of the Netherlands. It's their big moment, maybe. What can we see here? The Netherlands, again, they win it back. But they give you know possession where this is away. Going. You know where this is going. Long throw. Where is he? You can just see him. There he is. Milinkovic Savic. Long ball. It misses him completely. Doesn't matter though. Pull it. Last chance. Any time of two minutes. Extra time oh. will be needed. We've got a free kick first. We've got a Brazilian free kick first. Let's get back to the game. No, it was for the Netherlands. Oh, I apologise. Well, <laughs> <time. laughs> I apologise. Well, well, well. Extra oh. time is needed in this year's e Nations Cup final. It's all of them always delivers the drama. And maybe that substitution was with extra time in hand as well, in mind for the last time the Netherlands. That, the they last, did it against yeah, Australia. I think it's about the 70th minute, Richard, in the time. It was Manu that came in for Emre Yilmaz. Obviously, as we know, went on to penalties. Resendo. What a substitution for Brazil. Getting amongst it. Paulo Neto. And PhD have turned this game on its head. What a final. Well, 180 minutes and four goals was enough to separate the two. 30 more minutes is needed. The term in this year's. 2v2 World Champions at the e Nations Cup. Grand prize of $300,000. Good Big win, it's a massive turnover. Neymar. Ruben Diaz is back once or twice. He's going to give away another corner or not. And Militao wins again. It's aggressive from Brazil. This first period of extra time is usually low scoring. Usually nothing happens. And we all we start to see in the second period from 105 to 120 with penalties looming. A little bit more drama, but Brazil. Corinthia. Just non-stop drama, it's gotta be said. Even at 2-0, Richard, with what, 45 minutes left to be played, we doubted them. Just because Netherlands were so good defensively. They gave away a penalty, they saved one, they gave away another penalty. Palanetto had to take both of those. Fortunate for him. On well, the second time of asking, R9 could find the back of the net. Well, we've near enough played 15 minutes of extra time already, and as expected. Nothing really to talk about. 
the smallest of margins now. Will play its part, determining who will be world champion. And there we have it. 15 minutes of extra time gone. 15 minutes away from penalties. PH Zin's already had penalty drama in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Up against Team Footwiz. That was in the Club World Cup. Just see. Renzo going over his tactics, instructions. On the other side of it, Brazil, certainly the team on top in the ascendancy. Still can't get over <laughs> this performance can't watch. from Paolo Neto. Look, a superb player by his own right. I know PSG needs to be the captain. Only played four games, not, play, not picked up a controller. Since what? Wednesday? Day two of the group stages. Secret weapon, Neto. He comes on and changes the game. Well, can he be a hero for Brazil? Here they come now. Not for that long. Hugo Lloris does get subbed on. That's his shapeshifter right, to believe it or not. Does play as a central midfielder. Ooh. Mbappe got a step over. His Neymar's in the box. Waiting for the right key. PAZ in steal. PAZ in! Take a bow! You speak about individual moments in 2v2 FIFA, Richard Buckley. Look no further. He tricked everybody in attendance as well as that Netherlands side with the fake shot. When do you ever see that? Look at, oh, just incredible stuff. He got it out wide. He worked his way into the box and then just jinked inside. You just see Resende go up to him and literally shout in his face, are you human? <laughs> that was pretty ridiculous. What he just pulled off there. <laughs> Nine minutes. A player that, and if, if that, only knows this feeling only too well in extra time. Did it against Poland last year in an E-Nations Cup final to remember when he was sat alongside Kripaldi. Brazil are not far away from writing history. We've never seen a back-to-back E-Nations Cup winner. Are we about to see one here? Ten minutes for the Netherlands to show us some of that goal-scoring form. And how the coin turns completely on its head. Brazil now, the pressing is gone. You just wanted to keep the ball, you wanted to see out the game. The Netherlands, everything going forward. Erling Haaland's been a great substitution as well. Just as that out ball every single time on the left hand side. Well, teammates outside of this, the two 18 year olds. And it's time to show what you're worth. Manny Bashor, Emre Gilmaz looking for an equaliser. Ball ricochets off. Garincha on the way through. That looked to be a dangerous ball for a second. There's the aggressive press. Comes off the head of Mbappe. Still in possession is the Netherlands. Looking for an all-important equaliser. There's the step-overs. Here's Manny Bashor. Reverse Elastico or two. That might be it. You might get one more chance if the ball turns over, which it won't. The running race, Neymar taking time out of the game. They do not need to score again. Possession in their hands. The trophy near enough in their hands for a second year in a row. Any time to follow. What a comeback. What a story. What a nation this is. They did it last year in Copenhagen. They travelled to the Middle East with a comeback story like no other. Brazil will be world champions once again. Never write them out. What a leader. That man is on the screen. PhD, the Resende, the experience. Paolo Neto, the secret weapon that you always need to have. And I think what you see there is a man that's been through all the emotions in the last four days here in Riyadh. Such a... A big substitution as well, in between the two legs on the other side. They can't believe it, and, and either can we. Two and up, defending so well. Penalty save. 
Look at these scenes. That's what it means. That's what being the best nation on the planet when it comes to FIFA Esports. And that is what it's all about. What a final. Brazil, if you just joined, back to back. 2v2 world champions, another E Nations Cup win. No matter where the tournament is held, they will turn up, they will qualify. And by the looks of it, they'll win the trophy. It might have been a slightly different roster this time round, but the captain remained the same, the danger man remained the same. On the other side, as we said, the Netherlands, you've got to feel for them. What a tournament they've played. It's their best ever out in an E-Nations Cup. It won't mean much now, I know that, I know that. But still, what a team that's been put together and a, and a great example of just talent coming through year after year. And what a, a moment for Resende. He's at the historic FIFA eSports season. When you look back, FIFA 18, FIFA 19, we've been there every step of the way. And it's always been, well, he gets to the finals, he gets to the semi-finals, but he doesn't get the moment. Last year, in Copenhagen, he didn't get the moment to lift the trophy. This year, he is a pivotal part of this roster. 25 years of age for Sendez, well, you question how many more days out Absolutely. is it going to be like this? He may have been to two E World Cups, he may have been an E Libertadores winner, but how about an E Nations Cup winner? This one will mean different for him especially. It On will. the sidelines last year, yes, he was there with the celebrations, lifting the trophy, but this time, he has played his Part. Without any further ado, it's been a pleasure bringing you this grand final. But for now, it's over to Spencer Owen to crown this year's champions. Wow, what an incredible final. It's now time to crown our winners. It's my privilege to present to you the champions of the FIFA E Nations 2023, Brazil! <laughs> Incredible scenes there, back-to-back -back champions. The first country ever to win the E Nations twice is, of course, Brazil. I'm gonna have a few words with the guys now. I think you've got another wristband to add to your hand, haven't you? Yeah, I still got the wristband from last season. And I don't know, you guys didn't give me one for this season, but I'm gonna keep this one. <laughs> Incredible stuff. Listen, one thing that's unique about this 2v2 format and the role of the coach is the substitutions you can do in-game. How important was that change you made at 2-0 down? Yeah, we know we got three amazing players, so we know Paulo is the king of the United States. He has been on winning MLS back to back to back, so we know his power is offensive, and we needed two goals. We got, got two behind, and we have to sub Paulo in to be back on the game. As a footballing nation, you're, you've won the most World Cups of any country. Now you've won the most E-Nations of any com uh, country as well. Does that make you the most dominant football na nation on and off the pitch? I, I think I think makes, right? Uh, but we super humble. We, we, we won against Netherlands. We are pretty close friends. They are a really good nation as well. It was a great ma match. But yeah, we dominate football. And if you're going to win a final of this stature, and if it's going to be an extra time, it takes a special goal to win it. And talk to me about that goal, because it was unreal. Yeah, PH Zin, he has a star. I have been saying this. He's the best player in the world. And he's showing us again this season, last season with the, the nine minute goal, this season with the extra time goal. Yeah, he, he's super special. We, we're glad he's a Brazilian. <laughs> Well, it's a special team and a special country. And of course, along with the title of the number one country in FIFA Esports comes with a rather large check. $300,000 has been won here by Brazil. Congratulations, an incredible display. Two years in a row now. Who knows, maybe they'll make it three in a row. But they're $300,000.
dollars richer. The FIFA E Nations 2023 champions, Brazil. Now I'm going to uh, shortly have a chat with our losing finalist team Netherlands. They're just finishing up another interview, but of course with every winner comes a, a losing side. So we'll have a quick chat with them. But before, while we wait for that interview to finish, we're going to go over to our casters, Richard and Brandon, to talk us through what we've just seen. Yeah, I mean, what a final that was. We won't see moments of that again. I think everyone at home probably thought that was game over. 2-0 to the Netherlands. They were so good defensively. Brazil just could not break them down. And then Paolo Neto got on the sticks and things started to, uh, to change in that second leg. It doesn't matter if you, what, he played four games in the tournament. Four games. He played the most important 90 minutes of his FIFA career right there. Uh, it, absolutely incredible performance from Brazil. The Netherlands were right there with them. And it was just a, a game of such small margins, such small changes. The Brazil, the Brazilian team, that Brazilian national pride that comes through. And every single FIFA player in Brazil right now can hold their head up high. They are on top. Oh, the best nation. <laughs> They've got to be. Well, there was one nation that gave us a great final. They'll be gutted right now. And they're uh, unfortunately joined with Spencer. They did do so well, top two, but unfortunately not enough this time around. Yeah, they did incredibly well, uh, Brandon. I know they're going to be hurting right now, but I'm hoping you're also proud of what you've done here. You know, top 16 this time last year, top two this year. You're a young, talented squad. I've got no doubt it'll only be a matter of time before we see you lift the trophy. But Manu, how are you feeling at this point in time? Feels like a wasted chance. You never know when you will be here again because FIFA is a very complicated esport where it's depending on form of the day and the margins are so close and when you're so close to winning then it hurts even more like you rather just lose 5-0 and say they were better but yeah it hurts. It was an incredibly tight game Renzo, a 2-0 up there was a, a chance that went wide or I believe could have sealed the game. Looking back is that going to be a, a real painful one? I mean they've missed a couple chances as well so that's just the way how FIFA works but yeah, they could have probably sealed the deal 3-0 up, but yeah, it's an incredible performance from them in the end, and unfortunately we just fell a little short. Yes, very fair to say there was a missed penalty as well, of course, uh, from the Brazilians. Levy, I know you're going to be disappointed right now, but as I mentioned before, you guys are such a young, talented squad. Hopefully in time, this will make you even more hungry to come back, and do you believe we will see you lift this trophy at some point? Yeah, um, yeah that last question, I'm sure we will lift this trophy at one point. Um, I felt like this was a chance. It was. We were 2-0 up. I think we played like amazing like first game. Second game, even when they make a, made the substitution, uh, we were playing pretty well. But there was like a momentum change. I don't know what it was. And then we just lost every ball on, on our own half and we couldn't get like uh, out of their press anymore. Um, conceded two penalties. I don't know if it was a penalty, but in the end they were just amazing in attack. and probably deserved like the draw with the 2-2 and yeah that 3-2 was just class I think from Paolo um, I can't blame Manu or Ember for that not at all because they defended pretty well and I felt like they were still gonna score yeah you guys have been fantastic across the board you know such a talented squad Emre you're such a young talent we're gonna see you obviously at the E World Cup as well does this make you hungry to go and show what you can do in the 1v1 format yeah of course it was a great tournament um, I'm very um uh, wait. Uh, Disappointed? No, no, no. Uh, self taken I'm confident for the World Cup. <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. Just now, uh, folks on one v one. Okay. Well, we look forward to seeing some fantastic one v one FIFA next week, of course. But right now, it's all about countries. It's all about two v two. Brazil have done it back to back twice in a row. Incredible scenes here in Riyadh, Rachel. Yeah, it's a case of deja vu, isn't it, for that Brazilian side, back-to-back -back world champions here. And maybe the coach, Gabal, there with his little wristband, maybe that was a bit of a, a lucky charm as well. He didn't get to have one this time out, but a, a massive well done as well to the team from the Netherlands. Oh, so close. I'm sure their time will come. I know they talk about, you know, changing games in FIFA, but they've done so well to get this far. So a massive congratulations for them being runners up this year at the FIFA E Nations Cup. But we have to talk about that Brazilian side, guys. They had a party once again here, didn't they, Mike? I mean, we kind of, on the couch here, it said, after that first leg, kind of written them off. 
Two nil down. I don't know if we wrote them off. Stop putting words in my mouth. <laughs> I said two words. In fact, I, I shouted at it. I talked to the camera. I said, Palo mm. Neto. And Palo Neto made that appearance, made the difference, offensively had everything. We didn't have our answer. Now we have our answer, Alex. We questioned, should he come on? I said, he's got to come on. You said, maybe not. Maybe not in this situation. They did the business. I should to quickly go to Aggie on this. PH Zin, what a player. He gets to go again next week, but he was part of that winning side last year. He's the best in the world, surely. I mean, uh, definitely MVP of this competition. And Joga Bonito, I mean, um, for me, that, uh, that achievement Brazil just did there, it's got to be up there as the biggest one in, e in FIFA Esports history. No one defended their crown at a major. I mean, that's, that's impressive. The fact that you could also pivot and do it with different players, Mike, which makes them even more special. Well, I'm also thinking of how they did it. They were down 2-0. We were questioning what do they need to change. They didn't look good in that first leg. Let's be very transparent. They weren't impressive. They didn't deserve to be ahead. They probably were hoping to have the reset to go into the second leg, and boy, did it make a difference. It was late. It was great. They missed a penalty kick. They then converted a penalty kick. Had a little bit of everything. And, and as Aggie said, we've never seen this in FIFA Esports history. This is a huge moment. And just congratulations to the guys and also to, to the Netherlands team. I think they will be in a lot more competitions together. They've got a bunch of talent there. Everybody's young. And they should hold their heads high. It was such a special final. It's the kind of final we want to see as fans as well. And we get to relive it now, Alex, because we're going to see all the moments from that grand final. Yeah, we couldn't have wished for a better grand final. The Netherlands were the ones that started off strong. Brazil catching themselves out with that switch. Big aggressive press from the Netherlands. They started strong. They started as they wished to carry on. Ronaldo just squeezing that one through. That wasn't all done there for them in that first leg. The fancy footwork, the step overs, lovely finish. And at that point, we were thinking, Brazil, have they got an answer back? They have indeed. And the name is Paulo Neto. He came on, he made a difference in that attack. He spiced it up, the first penalty that Brazil had. It was Paulo Neto that stepped up. He took that on himself. The Netherlands with a huge save. Then it was again, I said to Aggie at the time, I think the tackle had to be made because Milinkovic Savic looked as if he would find the back of the net. And Paulo Neto again, two times in a row, took that pressure on himself, said, not to worry. I'll put us back into this game. 77th minute, and it was all about the fancy footwork. Neymar is not going to miss from there. And then PH Zin did some footwork mm -hmm. that was just beautiful. Mbappe with that drive, the ball roll, I think he's going to lay it off. The fake shot on the inside. Mike. And the finish. And Again, when you watch the highlights, it didn't tell all of the picture of this game, but I think you have to give so much credit to the mentality from the Brazilian team because you got to look at this. They went down 1-0, terrible mistake, especially yeah. in the final, awful mistake. And a lot of people that start messing with you mentally. Then they go down two goals. It wasn't the best defending. Then you miss a penalty kick. You're starting to say it's just not your day. And somehow they got themselves back into this. And I hope that somebody clipped the celebration from PH Zin on the equalizer because he just took off running. It's a new celebration. I, never, I don't know where he went. I didn't see him. He wasn't in frame. I'm still not sure. I, I think he was touching monitors on other pods. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what was happening. But it was, it was one of those finals you dream for or you hope to see. And, and you never know how it's going to go down. And boy, did it live up to it. And just to say as well, quickly, that we, we spoke here after the end of that first leg. And we said... Paolo Neto hasn't come in to this situation before. He didn't play at all. No, didn't play a massive amount of FIFA throughout this tournament. He got subbed in, and okay, all right, we said, that's a big moment for him to come into that. I apologize, Paolo. He just went and did the job that he got asked to do. Mike, it's that was your reaction there, when we didn't know where he went. He just jumped off, it's okay, he came back. Uh, Aggie, I wanted just to quickly draw your attention as well to the final nine minutes of that game. Just the Brazilians had the confidence and the composure just to dance around with the ball there as well. Yeah, that was special. I mean, uh, I was saying it, <laughs> yoga bonito. I mean, that, that's what they're doing oh, yeah. in, in Brazil. Uh, that was a great footwork and obviously something for the eyes. Um, and the right things do. I mean, just keep the ball at the corner and just waste that last uh, bit like of time minutes. and get the... Get the yeah, I mean, it was impressive. It was really impressive and uh, yeah, huge congratulations to Brazil. I mean, Alex, uh, final thoughts as well from, from everyone here. 
Obviously, they're back-to-back -back champions. The boys there spoke about Resende. Now he's age 25, you know, aging in his FIFA career, some might say. You know, are we ever going to see a team go back-to-back -back again? Can there be a, a triple crown, possibly even next year? Are they that good? They are that good. And PH's in as well. I think it goes down now without saying. The best 2v2 player to ever play this game. Yes, we've seen some magical performances from everyone else, but for him to come here and do it back to back, maybe this time next year we're saying back to back to back. We'll have to wait and see. And Aggie, just final thoughts on these past four days as well. It's been really special, hasn't it? I mean, it's very unique. Uh, we got to see a lot of quality FIFA once again, and uh, a lot of nations represented here, a lot of different cultures as well. It's one of the things that I love the most. Uh, amazing. and. To, to end that uh, incredible final that had everything. I mean, Mike, we could even be treated to those two players which we saw there, Emre Yilmaz and PH Zin, go head to head next week. I've just been dating back and thinking through all the years that have been around both the FIFA Interactive World Cup, then to the FIFA E World Cup, adding the E Nations, the E Club. And to August's point, I'm not past it. I, I, we haven't seen this. We haven't seen a repeat. All these years, the amount of talented players, that shouldn't be just brushed over. It's really an incredible achievement in a game that has such fine margins. And the fact that they changed their team. Think back as well, last world champion. I know we keep saying this, but it just doesn't happen. Two of the three players that are still playing FIFA, they didn't retire. They said, hey, we have better options and we're going to run with those options. And it worked. For you to get Mike so excited, take something, that's for sure, because it has been a fabulous four days once again here at the FIFA E Nations Cup. Thank you to Alex, to Aggie, to Mike, to Richard Brannan and Spen, and of course, congratulations then to Brazil. They successfully defended their title. They are champions once again. Well, two down, guys. One to go, and we go again, don't we, on Sunday. This time it's the FIFA E World Cup. It's 1v1 FIFA at its finest. Expect fireworks. We'll be there. Come and join us, won't you? But until then, goodbye and good night.